Hello, welcome to <laughs> to our program. Uh, you see, uh, we bap bap bap. You see, uh, Christina Ricci is on the podcast today on our audio delivery that's coming at you from the 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 through the wooden box radio thing. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, we're just, I know you guys want intros and you want us to tell you who's on the podcast and I I don't understand why because there's Google and it just confuses me so much why I have to say, tell you that Christina, who Christina Ricci is. Like, I just, I don't get why that's so hard for some of you guys. Um, but it is a good opportunity to tell you that I am uh, Florida. I'm coming to your state and Coral Springs, Florida. I don't know what that means or where that is it's basically miami fort lauderdale for la di da i love fort lauderdale um i've made a lot of mistakes there uh one time i went on vacation there with my dad and there was a dead fish on the beach and i uh, was so sad that i tried to revive it by um like making it like slapping it on top of the ocean and it didn't work and i learned a valuable lesson that day in fort lauderdale <laughs> And I like the humidity in Fort Lauderdale. It's good for your skin. And, but it's basically Miami. Also, the other thing about Miami is there aren't a lot of like stand up venues there. So, last time I was there, y'all party hard in Miami. You do not play around. And I got humbled last time I was performing in Florida last year, two years ago. Why do comics always say like last year, yesterday, last night? Like, let's be honest. You know when a good comedian does like a set and they're like, so yesterday I saw this thing. Yesterday I saw this thing. And you're like, you had a busy day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, that was wild. You went through a breakup and dropped your kid off at school and <laughs> went home for Thanksgiving all in one day. Um, where am I going with this? The point is, Florida, I'm in Miami. Y'all party. Normally the show times are 7 p.m., and like 9.30 p.m. In Miami, the first show is always at 9 p.m. on a weekend. And, you know, I usually go to Florida when I'm about to shoot a special because, you know, Florida is just a great indication of what is funny when you're doing stand-up because it's like, you know, you guys are like, you have a good sense of humor, smart, you can take a joke, whatever, last stop, gonna go to the beach, get some sun, get tan, look cute, shoot the special. And I go down and there's these um, girls in the audience. You know, it's like nine o'clock show, drinking champagne, they're in their sequiny dresses, their BBs and their Arden B and their bandage dresses and their handkerchief tops. And they're filming me while I'm on stage and I'm like it's a it's a tricky situation when you're being filmed because you're like oh, I want you like I want you to enjoy the show and have a good time but I also like I don't want you to put stuff out mm -hmm. on YouTube that other people can see because then I'm look like a hack and I'm still working it out it's, it might not be ready yet and so I finally had to say something I was like girls I love you so much thank you for coming to the show but can you please stop filming and they looked at me and they were like Grace, the fact that Grace managed to sneeze right at the perfect time where I was going to crescendo that story is truly unbelievable. This is, this is a girl that is allergic to not being the center of attention. This is someone who physically sneezes when someone else has the limelight. This is... Grace is someone who is allergic to someone else being funnier than her. So it has to sneeze. Great timing, though, by the way. A great comedic timing. I don't know how to even get back on track for that. <laughs> Sorry, Christina Ricci's publicists. Um, I know you're listening to this and you're just like, why? Like, should I just go to law school? Should I just go to Albuquerque and make soap? Yep. You should, and meth, and get a Chia Pet, call it a day. So, <laughs> so I'm like, like, <laughs> really not wanting to 
call these girls out that are having so much fun because they're filming me because I'm like, oh, they're tagging me. They're filming me like that. This is the new no, the new world. Like, this is what we do. And I was like, you guys, can you guys just not film me while I'm doing stand up? I just I don't want it to get online. And then I then it's going to ruin the special. And they looked at me and they were like, we're filming ourselves like they were taking <laughs> selfie. It wasn't of me. It was of themselves. <laughs> I I made the grave mistake of thinking that I was the celebrity in the room <laughs> and when in fact it was them. Um, so that's South Florida for you. <laughs> Come to my show so that you can document yourself watching me do stand up <laughs> and send me that footage because I need some reaction shots. We're going to go to Orlando, Hard Rock <laughs> Cafe. Which is in Orlando. Am I doing comedy in cafes still? I feel like I've worked really, really hard. I'm at a point where I can't do comedy in any more cafes. <laughs> I do open mics in cafes, but it's the Hard Rock. Let's just call it the Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. Orlando, Florida, November 13th. Royal Oak, I'm coming at you hard. Royal Oak Music Theater. First show. There are some tickets. The other one's sold out. Here's the thing about the sold out shows. A lot of people... <laughs> This is cracks me up. Okay, so oh, you guys bought these tickets like two years ago. A lot of people are not coming because they're like, hey, I bought these tickets, but like, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> people have moved. They're like, we're in, I'm like, we don't live in Royal Oak anymore. Someone dude. died. Someone died. My uncle, like I had to move to Spain to deal with my <laughs> uncle's estate. <laughs> Like, I know there was a woman who was like, sorry, I couldn't make your show. <laughs> so I bought the tickets when I was single for a, a couple of my girlfriends, and now I have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> so these rescheduling shows has been a little bit of a, a little bit squirrely um, because uh, of all the rescheduling. So so we were in also when we were in Atlanta last week, the Braves won. So there's a Braves parade and all these people bought tickets. It was sold out venue. But then there were all these like there were some empty seats. And then I was like, what's going on? Why? Like, did I thought we sold the show out? Why didn't we? Add, and then people were like, oh, sorry, couldn't make the show. Bought tickets at the Braves parade, like rolled my ankle <laughs> drunk on the side of the like people just so come even if you even if it's sold out, come. Because there will be empty seats um, due to all sorts of unforeseen circumstances. I'm going back to Wisconsin on November 19th. Love you guys. Oh, yes. I, that's where I puked up all those cheese curds the other day. I lied on the floor for between 15 and 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a weird window of time. I had to take a cold shower before I got on the show because I I took a Spirit Airlines flight. Grace, we need to talk. And I vomited. I thought I had COVID. And I ate so many cheese curds that I threw up into the toilet, Wisconsin. November 20th, I'm going to be in Minneapolis. Uh, at the Pantages Theater, there's a second show was added. December 3rd, Boise, I'm going to be at the Egyptian Theater. Is that racist at all? We're allowed to say Egyptian Theater? Okay. Walk Like an Egyptian, one of my favorite songs. Not going to sing it, not going to dance to it. December 4th, Seattle, Washington, Neptune Theater. We added a show we sold out so fast. But like, don't, we sold it out so long ago that don't forget that you got your tickets. You don't like people might rebuy tickets at this point. Like, it's just like people are like, oh, hey, I forgot that I had tickets to this already. I bought another set of tickets and then I found them in my dresser drawers. <laughs> December 9th, the Joanne Davidson. Who is this woman? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't like I just the fact that this Joanne Davidson in Columbus, Ohio, the fact that the theaters are named after the people that paid money to put their name on the theater like do you really want your name on this like you don't know who's coming after you i don't want to buy a theater and then it's like i don't know you know what i mean why put your name on a theater who cares for what joanne you we have to talk december 10th i'm in cleveland at the agora theater simple clean <laughs> 
December 11th. I'm in Chicago at the Vic Theater. There's a second show in Chicago. Chai Chai, let's talk. Plus, we just were announcing just now that I'm going to be in Las Vegas in January. Look at me. Win Las Vegas. Steve Wynn, do you know that he has an assistant? Sorry, I love this story. You know what I, I love this he is? Okay, so Steve Wynn. This is a rumor, which means it's true, that Steve Wynn has someone. Christina Ricci is coming up. Don't worry. Don't panic. <laughs> don't be mad. Um, scroll, scroll forward if you want. After hosting Wendy Williams, I'm full chaos. I can tell. I'm into the chaos. I'm like, just leave it in. Did I, I got in a Wendy Williams wormhole of her going, like, sipping the tea, her tea, going like, is this the same tea bag from you? Like, she's like, we're watching, <laughs> it looks like a rehearsal. I want the podcast to feel like, does she know she's that we're rolling? That's the kind of energy I'm into 2022. Okay, so Steve Wynn is <laughs> going blind. <laughs> Steve Wynn, brilliant, seems like a nice guy. And billionaire, has all this money. And he's got somebody who's an assistant whose only job is to push his cups. <laughs> <laughs> his only job is to, <laughs> is to push his cups back onto the table when he places them like half off the table. <laughs> So he has someone, this has to be a video now, because look, he goes, he'll be like, anyway, so I just bought this Van Gogh, and someone just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's only job, like the guy in succession, like the tall guy, like it's only job <laughs> is to just make sure. <laughs> is to just make sure that he scooches. He's the scoocher. He's the guy that scooches the cup from here whoop, to there. Whoop! It's that guy. Whoop, what do you do for a living? I scooch Steve Wynn's mug. <laughs> Every now and then I have to scooch Steve Wynn's mug because he's going blind. He's got a billion dollars, but he can't see. So every time he puts down his mug, I got to scooch. <laughs> he just follows him around and does it. <sighs> like, what does he write when he goes to the doctor and it says occupation? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm at the Wynn Las Vegas. And if you work for Steve Wynn, I'd love to meet you. And I, I aspire to have somebody that scooches my coffee cup when I put it on a table in a tilted way because I'm that rich and blind and lost as I'm showing you a tour of my collection. Wednesday, 11.10 at 10 a.m. Code touch. I don't understand any of these codes. What are these fucking pre-sale codes? I know you guys are smart. You guys are smarter than me. So you tell me, You just get tickets. You know what to do. We got this. Sorry about all the codes. Add to cart. <laughs> just, I, I don't know. January 15th, see you there. My mom's birthday is the 13th, so I'll be in great shape. <laughs> Christina Ricci. <laughs>
is 10 months. So why do we say nine months? I don't know. So from conception to... Birth? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vaginal <laughs> explosion. <laughs> um, what, is, what is the time? It's 10 months total. It's 10 months. It's 40 weeks. Uh-huh. I feel like there, there's a lot of things we've heard in movies that have misled us into uh, how childbirth is supposed to go. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about how, like, movies set these unrealistic expectations for women and relationships. How about childbirth? Yeah. A friend of mine, when she had her first baby, she was like, I thought my water was going to break and explode. Not only, like, 10% of women's water actually breaks. Yeah. Then, have you seen the videos where they, like, pierce it? (laughs) No, I am not on that Pornhub algorithm. (laughs) They show you, I mean, they show you live births and they like encourage you to see live births. And I, my first pregnancy, I wanted to be really prepared for every horrific outcome so that I could manage my feelings ahead of time. So <clears throat> they tell you like, you know, after you give birth, you might look at your vagina with a mirror and don't be upset. And so I was horrified when I read that and then I Googled images and it's, Wow. It's intense. I was really happy I had a C-section. Your first? Yeah. And did that happen planned or unplanned? No. And at the time, I was annoyed because, like, I lived in Brooklyn and Williamsburg, and it was, like, a big deal. It's like, what's your birth plan? And I never... I was always like, my birth plan is I'm going to do whatever the doctor tells me. And exactly. And I'm definitely getting pain meds. Yeah. Um, but it was very popular to have a doula and to have natural births and all this stuff, which I wasn't excited about, but I kind of got into this idea that I wanted to have a vaginal delivery just because it's very anticlimactic to like go through all of this and then not have the water break. Oh, I'm in labor, rushing to the hospital thing. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I guess I wanted that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, But then my doctor wanted to schedule my delivery because she wanted to give me a C-section in front of students. <laughs> Which I didn't know there would be students involved until right before. And then I called the hospital to ask them to please not allow her to have, like, students like, at this my C-section. Like, this is shut? We're not... I just was like, I can't... I mean, I don't want people talking about seeing my insides later. You know what I mean? You know... It's a little different when you're Did kind you Do you get, like, a discount for that <clears throat> or something? No. And they lied, and they said they wouldn't, and then I was completely, like, numbed up and lying down, and then they brought in the students. To watch you get cut open and have my baby taken out of my insides. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really want the C-section, but I had to. She told me, too, that I wasn't the kind of person who was going to go into labor, and she she refused to induce me. If she told the hospital not to induce me, they wouldn't. And... I also didn't want to have a, I didn't want to go into labor, not be able to deliver the child, and then have a tired doctor perform the C-section on my child. She was like, you don't want a tired doctor develop, <laughs> um, performing your C-section, which I took well, to me. Well, a tired like, man made the baby. So what, what, it, it, I just I took that as a threat. So I was like, great, we're just having a C-section. <laughs> and afterwards, I was fine. I mean, afterwards, I was like, you know what? I didn't destroy my vagina. I have this small scar I was fine afterwards. The baby was sh- head was shaped nicely, so I was just like, all in all, this has worked out great. So I'm fine with it, even though I didn't enjoy the way we got to C-section, and no, and people in my neighborhood wouldn't talk to me. They said I should have gotten a doula and fought. I was like, fought? I'm not gonna fight anyone. And fought. Fought. I was like, me and the doula are gonna <laughs> just like take, toe take to toe. Medical system. Now this is just your sex dream, like mud right. wrestle. You yeah. want us to get in a thing of Jello and fight? I should have gotten a doula and fought for my baby. I was like, well, I mean, no. I don't know. Maybe the doctor's right, and I should have a C-section. Maybe it's more than just, I don't know. I'm not a mother uh, to infants. Some I am to some. I've raised a couple men in my day. A couple boyfriends. Um, But I feel like, you know, I did date a pediatric anesthesiologist. And he, you know, I always like to stay in my lane around the motherhood stuff. And he was like, the number one way we see babies perish is coming in 
is babies is people that wanted to have home births. Well, that's my thing. I would never do a home birth just because I feel like it's valuable to have the emergency room right Use there. Use the technology. Yes, I Use agree. Use the technology. And I no judgment towards anyone who wants to do whatever. But for me personally, I have way too much anxiety. It's also to this. It's like that. when you go to the hospital, are you riding a horse or are you driving a car? You're driving a car. Yeah. So when you get there, get the epidural if you need it. You know, his whole thing is like, epidurals is, I want it to be natural. Like, the best thing for I don't know why you want to accept <laughs> pro- the progress. Like, I know that's how I feel too. Like maybe I'm one of those women that would have died in childbirth, so maybe the C-section um, is great for me. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. maybe this this progress is really helping me. Has the life. second pregnancy been different than the first? Um, I've been a lot less swollen, which is hard to believe looking at me. But you look amazing. No, I'm really really. But it's like natural fill. Like it is. Out. It's it is actually quite a lot of filling out and puffing. It's like awkward because you look so young and you're pregnant. You look like a child bride. <laughs> like you look like a twelve year old pregnant true. girl. I just saw jowls earlier on my face and I was like, oh, but I did this thing today that I think is a good tip. My face has been so swollen, I froze my face mask and put it on my face frozen. Game changer. Yeah, I had a jawline again. I have a jawline today because of the frozen. And you put it in the freezer and then you put it on for how long? Well, it was still all crispy, just the normal amount of time that it would normally be on my face. I feel like when we first started texting, it was about skin stuff. It was. It was about that <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'm obsessed with all those lasers and everything, and I cannot wait to go back and get my face laser to every three months. Laser, laser, laser. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we were texting about, like, skincare stuff. You are probably the paragon of skin du porcelain. I don't think so. I've seen sure. some really good skin in my life. I'm just saying, oh. but I would say you are icon- your skin is iconic. Okay. Is that what Paragon, the- <laughs> is, that what, is that what all that meant? Sorry. <laughs> excuse me. Um, yeah. I mean, people do assume I have porcelain. Like you're like a skin. doll. You have yeah. a doll face, like poreless. I don't you- think in real life I do, but I think that that is something that people do to images of me quite frequently. Hmm. And when I was younger. What do you do to your skin? What do I do to my skin? Mm-hmm. Well, when I was younger, when I was 20 and Botox became fam- popular, I was like, well, I want to smoke cigarettes and not take care of my skin and mm-hmm. drink and stay up late. So I'm going to freeze this and it'll be great later. Mm-hmm. And it worked out. It was good. It was a good move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a strong choice on my part. Nailed it. Yeah. I lost some, a lot. I lost some parts. made good choices in their 20s. <laughs> I lost some parts because I couldn't emote properly, I think. Um, oh my God, I've so done that. Yeah. Gotten the Botox, gone in the audition and been like, oh, I'm so scared. Yeah. Oh, I'm so yes. scared. I my forehead's not moving, but yeah. I promise I'm scared. I didn't do myself any favors in that department, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Rejection <laughs> is God's protection. Yes. Exactly. Um, well, I did that, but then I do really enjoy the lasers at the doctor's office. But I feel like the lasers, the IPLs, the ones that just like burn off the top layer of your mm-hmm. face, they take they, um, the hair follicles die. So you start to get really shiny. So Wait, you well, you have to do it in a way where you don't end up looking like a burn victim. Correct. Yeah. It's really like a burn victim's skin afterwards. There was a, um, remember Krista Smith? She's now at um, Netflix, where she were, she was at Vanity Fair. She was the West Coast editor, and she was working on a story about just sort of Botox, faces, et cetera, and said something interesting. She said, wrinkles are now a sign of youth. Because you're too young to have had anything done yet? Or more wrinkles are a sign of youth. <laughs> understand how is this possible because like <laughs> when you're old the older you are the less wrinkles you have because yes, you got so much yes, done exactly so, so yeah so if you're 25 you have wrinkles well i have noticed that they have like smile lines and yes stuff. totally that we're afraid of you yeah. know so, so, <laughs> <laughs> terrified so it's like so brave you have that in your face totally like 25 year olds you're like Jeez, hey benjamin button like are you okay <laughs> what's wrong like do you need some like what's going on you need some centrum silver like 25 year olds look older than 50 year olds at this right. point <laughs> Which is fascinating. It's true. I have stopped with all the Botox and everything, and I just do the laser treatment. Lasers, skin. What's your favorite skin? I do um, Lancer Method and 111 Skin. 111. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. Oh, that's fancy. The the masks are Are just so yummy. Delicia Haas. So I have a document. I have a document. For Christina Ricci, look what it says. Will you just read that for everyone? 
Oh, okay. Don't say um and don't interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I did notes to myself. Don't. Oh, I thought those were for me because no, I do that all the time. <laughs> okay, for me. Oh, okay. Don't say um and don't interrupt. Well, I will try not to say um or interrupt. I I want to talk about Yellow Jackets. This is a show you're doing on Showtime. I'm an addict. Everyone knows this. I identify as an addict, and I'm so annoyed that I've only seen three episodes. After seeing three, I was like angry on this podcast. We have a little bit of a Yula Jacket mm-hmm. issue, Benton. Yeah, we have this ongoing saying around here to watch out for them Yula Jackets. <laughs> oh. Because one time Whitney had company over, uh, her friend Nick, and he was going to go out in the yard, and, and it was the summer, and she just out of nowhere ran to the door and she went, Hey, Nick! Watch out for them yellow jackets. <laughs> Were they South African yellow jackets? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> and she Murder was hornet. very nervous about it, and we were all just taken aback. So now it's become this like slogan that people will scream at us to watch out <laughs> yeah, for yellow jackets. Watch That's them fun. Yellow jackets. The amount of people that have DM'd us. The billboard, wild. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so we have this weird, odd connection with Yellow Jackets anyway, because mm-hmm. Yellow Jackets, the bug, they are assholes. Yeah, they are. Yellow spent, Jackets yeah. kill bees. Yes. I'm a bee person. I love bees. Now I she's made of them. I'm made of bees. Um, and I, you know, I have a whole bee thing. Like, I have a water trough out for them, like, trying to save the bees, the whole thing. But I have uh, yellow jackets that come in, and they kill my bees, and they fight. But it's very hard to tell the difference sometimes. And then I'll break up fights between yellow jackets and bees. I mean, How it's, do you do that? How? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just saying, I know with dogs, that you spray water at them. She throws what her do body you do in between the them. It's called mental Illness, <laughs> and it. Well, you is, just get in there and wave your I hands just, yeah, around I, and stuff. I get my little press on nails, which are popping <laughs> off like, right now. Oh God, it's just popping off, and I just like stuff. don't get in between. Um, so yeah, Yellow Jackets. There were so many reasons I wanted to watch this show. I was in Nashville with Kesha doing the mm-hmm. that show, the uh, spooky show. She's uh, Kesha's doing a show about like haunted, like. Um, penitentiaries oh, and haunted places and like t- having these sort of mediums come and and I was watching it and I I stayed up till three in the morning I could not stop watching it I was obsessed oh good I'm glad it's, you know you work on something but then you don't know if people, you know you can't tell if it's good or not really yeah it's probably so hard to like get distance from it mm-hmm. it was yeah. just like I was, it was like, get this in my veins. Oh, that's good. I was obsessed. I wish it was like one of those shows where they dump it all at once then. Not like. Uh. No, I think this is good. I think it's good because the antis- like anticipation and the tension of waiting for the next, I think is a good thing. Okay, good. Yeah. And I like that. I like breaking it down. I'm very addicted to, like, I feel like this is going to be, Yellow Jackets is going to be like The Walking Dead or something. Where you're like, mm. I need to talk about what this means and what this symbolizes. And oh, Napoleon, what if this soccer player is... You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's just so intense. I have you, a question about that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like extra pressure when you do uh, shows and, and movies and stuff? Because literally every character you played is like so iconic. Do you feel like nice extra question. pressure to like, I gotta do, I gotta give another one, another... <laughs> I don't feel like that, but I feel like, but but thank you. Um, I feel hey, more like I just want to do really well so that it propels me onto the next thing. Like I'm a very like straightforward. Like I, I don't want to get fired. I want to be used, and I want to make the most of that of this opportunity. Like it's very mundane, my approach to everything. <laughs> healthy, it's a very healthy approach. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, but it is fun. But I do have this weird thing where like. Uh, maybe it's ego. Maybe it's um, egotistic. But I never want to do anything that anyone else has done before. So every time I create a character, I have this problem with where people are like, "Well, what is that?" Or like, um, the EPs or creatives or directors will be like, "I don't know what that is. I don't recognize that." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's why it's good. Like, we gotta. Yeah, yeah. Let's yep. do that. That's good. But that's people don't like that. So it's really sometimes unknown. difficult. The yeah. unknown." But I do have, so maybe that sort of more like where that kind of iconic thing maybe comes from is that I'm always trying to do something that you haven't seen before. Yeah, right? it probably makes it a, 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 a more fun challenge too. So you're yes, not getting boxed into being like. Yes, who wants to do something like, someone else has done before? I find yeah. it really uh, boring. Well, you're yes. very good at that. You're such a weirdo. 
I well, people people don't like it. They're like, well, I don't understand what that is. It's not relatable. I don't recognize that expression. You're just like, <laughs> like <laughs> this is wait, the but, uncanny valley. But then you'll be like, but there's a line that tells you how I feel. So why does my why, yeah. why do we have to double tap this? And you're also like, look at my track record. Like, well, don't argue don't with me. don't care about that. It's really amazing. Interesting. I also the way that we met. We've met. I feel like we've known each other for many past lives. Yeah, well, I when like, I was doing all my press for Pan Am, you were doing all the press for The Whitney Show. Whoa. And we had, we had crossover publicists. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I remember from that, we would always be like in another, you'd be in one dressing room and I'd be in another. Okay, I blacked I that, that. all that out. I see, I remember that. That's wild. <laughs> um, and I basically like, I just feel like we have this, I don't know, we know each other really, really well and on a very like deep level. Um, but I hadn't seen a lot of like, I haven't seen you like on talk shows. I haven't seen your appearances. Like I haven't seen that stuff, you know? And I was, um, before you came on, I was watching some of your talk show appearances. Oh, They're God, some of them are terrible. uncomfortable. <laughs> what, really? People are so weird with, men are so weird with you. Really? Like, I was watching something on Comic Con. People are like asking you questions, and you're just so grounded and normal. And it's so clear that so many men have such an intense attachment to you, and like they're just awkward with you. Okay, maybe that is what it is. I don't know what it is. I always feel like I just don't respond the way people want me to. <laughs> that's, that's really just where I took that. Like, it's just you're not corny. Yeah, no, I have a lot of trouble with, like I told you, my dream podcast is like Party Pooper. <laughs> so like the thing Wait, where tell I me about this idea. I love I want to do that. a podcast where it's where I'm either, it's either like something, the Party Pooper or like Change My Mind or called Change My Mind. Where, because I, I would. I can't believe you, you know that I, we do a game called Blow My Mind. Oh. Which is like Blow My Mind. Mm -hmm. Blow My Mind. <laughs> tell me something I don't know. Well, this one would be. Because the idea of the, the podcast is that like, all I do is disparage things that people love, like TikTok <laughs> for adults. Drag and precious things. Yes. Yeah. And just like point out why things are lame that people are really into. <laughs> and then, so but then you, think, like, you can't just you can't just have a show where that's all you do is trash stuff. So I'd have people like the biggest TikTok star and I'd be like, change my mind. Tell me why this I is should like you. valid and you shouldn't just be totally ashamed of yourself. <laughs> right because I feel like that would be a great show I would listen to that I would listen to yeah. that make me like you Which, yeah make me change, understand make me get make it me understand. because there have been things that people have changed my mind about and I've been like oh okay I see that I got it I it's, missed it I, now I get it yeah yeah I get it now yeah but I, I met but her I person but I, I do it. have like an allergy to to like corny cheesy and I also feel like sometimes I can tell what people want from me and I just refuse to give it to them <laughs> <laughs> which is horrible and like so teenage it's not it's so it's like, like oh. you're the original <laughs> like authentic like mm. I'm a jerk <laughs> it's <laughs> not jerk. it's not it's like the original it's you know Sheryl Sandberg all that like lean in stuff it's like lean out you're the opposite. You're like, yes. lean out. And I, I really do. Like, I, I'm very uncomfortable with being too accessible. I think it's because I'm small. I, I don't feel That's safe. That's a real thing. Yeah. That's very real. So I don't like being likable. I don't like playing likable characters. I don't want people to identify with me. I feel like, because I, I think that through life, I've learned that people will covet and claim and try to control and it's and so I'd rather be, I'd rather people were afraid of me. But what's hilarious is that nobody is. Nobody is afraid of me. <laughs> Everyone's like, "You're five foot two. We're gonna touch you all over and tell you how cute you are." And um, and now you're pregnant. So everyone's like, "What is it with when you're pregnant? People just can your public property." I don't really know. I mean, people like to touch your belly, which mm -hmm. it's like nothing to feel. Mm -hmm. It's not. There's nothing going. <laughs> nothing exciting going on there, guys. That is interesting. There's such a, a deep biological basis for the trauma of being 5'2". Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's Freud very real. said physicality is fate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that, like, you have to be smarter because you have to be hypervigilant because you can't necessarily reach the fruit. You can't necessarily reach I the I can't things. defend myself physically, and nobody is afraid of me. Mm -hmm. And 
I mean, I try to be a little bit more intimidating, but I'm just not capable. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't. It just doesn't work. Um, so, and you're dismissible because you're small. That's interesting. I I have a th- the therapist that I uh, work with. She's like a addiction trauma therapist and uh, EMDR type thing. And she, whenever I'm like having an issue with somebody who's being very aggressive with me, like a woman because that's my main struggle now is like kind of sort of when you come from like borderline personality disorder and the family home and alcoholism, it's like, you know, women, there's this very exciting moment where it's like women are bosses now. Yes. It's like, whoa, like we don't have a lot of practice, like being bosses to each other. And what's the difference between boss and bitch and being direct and being a cunt and me, you know, and um, are we allowed to be friends in the workplace? But like, Mm -hmm. what what is that supposed to mean? Like, it's just, we, Give us a second to grow our seed legs here. Um, so she'll always ask me if I'm like, this woman is like really being aggressive with me. And she's like, you know, she, she always will ask, how, how tall is she? And I'm like, five, five, four. And she'll be like, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, she has to. Yeah. Make up for a lot of Make things. up for it. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Like if any, if I want anyone to take me seriously, I have to be so extra cold and aloof and unfriendly. The second I'm like at all friendly, people are just like, oh, no. <laughs> you're just like, ew, get away from me. <laughs> Sorry I was nice to you. Like, I'm not a garden gnome. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> it's pretty interesting, but yeah. So, um, your dad was a primal screen therapist? Yeah, my dad had a mini cult. Cool. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, in theory, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, he was a primal stream therapist. He basically, like many cult leaders, uh, kind of roamed through his early uh, years with like weird odd jobs, you know, like a parole officer and you short order a cook and like a cook in the army, like weird stuff like that. Oh. And then found, I don't really know how, but he kind of, um, he, at the, in the 70s, when like everybody was getting very into like other people telling them what to do and who to be and all that stuff, he was like, I can do this. And so he started a group therapy um, thing, practice, called the Center for Emotional Reeducation. And it was... Um, they had, you know, it was like a meeting with a circle and chairs and people would role play and scream and you weren't allowed to look him in the eye or talk to him until he started session. And um, my mom told me about her first time that she went. And um, and uh, yeah, they this went on and then he ended up moving the whole group because they ended up like following him and worshiping him and stuff. And I'm sure he was just like, oh my God, amazing. I can really. I would like this to worked join. Out, this worked out better than I thought. <laughs> no eye contact, I'm in. And so he brought everyone to LA and he ended up doing it out here and getting involved in some other stuff. And then. Yeah, that's how Scientology started. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it was, but, and then he, and then he kind of, it all collapsed when cults became less popular and, uh, he ended up becoming a lawyer and some other stuff late in life. That's incredible. But he would still have for extra cash, um, a primal screen therapy meetings in our basement, which was not fully, um, soundproofed. And so I would go to bed like at 10 o'clock at night as a child and hear them screaming from downstairs. Like, I hate him. Why? (laughs) Because he's an asshole. Be specific. (laughs) You fucked my best friend. So that kind of thing. (laughs) And then in the morning, I'd come down at like six o'clock for school and I would imitate, reenact everything I heard from my mother who thought it was just the funniest thing she'd ever seen in her life. Because she thought the whole thing was so dumb. Question, do you think that that, him having a cult following, affected your view on why you don't want to play likable characters? Or you don't want, like, this, like, because you kind of have your own little, like, cult following among, like, you know, like, hot topic kids and, like, that community. <laughs> so, like, does that affect, like, with you being, like, okay, don't worship me. Like, I'm a person, too. Do you feel like that had an effect on that? Or because you watch someone be, like... No, because by the time I came around, like, it all fell apart when I was two. And then oh, there okay. were these evening sessions that I would hear um I don't know I mean maybe because my dad wanted to be liked so badly I it turned me off to people wanting to be liked that much um interesting I could just be projecting an entire story (laughs) it's totally possible I mean it's a valid point that's fascinating 
And like, I just, I'm just thinking about like, you know, because I was so reluctant to even do this with you because I was like, I want to be your real friend. I want to be friends with you. I like you. But I feel like when you are an actor from an early age, like so many people want so much from you. I don't want to be one of those people that's like taking from you, you know? Yeah. And then I was thinking about that. And and I was like, you know what? We were talking about last night with Amanda Knox, right? Uh, that like I still haven't figured out a way to articulate it. But that I think that when we say like child actors, like that's so crazy. I think that's the perfect time to start acting because you're already in an ima- imaginary yeah, creative state. Yeah, I think that state. if you can do the acting but not be the exploited business. for the fame. It's the fame part. Fame. It's interviews. It's people talking about the way you look. It's mm-hmm. all of that. It's the fame, mm-hmm. really, that I think is not good for, for young people because you should develop who you are before you present that to the world. That's interesting. Because otherwise people are just constantly telling you who you are. Who you are, right, right. it's confusing. Yeah, but I mean, it's it feels like, you know, you were a, I just feel like it's much weirder to start acting at like 25 when you've already become a human in the world and you know how reality works. And then you're like, I want to be a liar. Well, maybe, I don't know. I didn't have that experience. Yeah, like I feel like it. I feel like you nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it's the healthiest situation possible. Maybe I had a lot of trouble though in my twenties and stuff Mm -hmm. adjusting. Yeah, yeah, and like late teens, I did not like being famous. No, Mm -mm. why? She's too too like I don't know. I felt it, it was all very invasive, and you know, people have so many opinions about you and. I don't know. It's hard not to like take them as the constructive criticism. So then you're always trying to change and please and that kind of stuff. Something I'm obsessed with you about is like, why do you think, and I know you curate the roles that you take so, you know, carefully, but like, what have you learned from the characters you have played? Like it's, 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 you like to play, see, do things that no one's ever done, which I love. And then you're going into like, you know, whether it's drug addiction or sex addiction or these like really dark places or playing Lizzie Borden. Like, what have you mm-hmm. learned about human nature from having to like enter into those like really dark spaces? I think I just have really, I mean, it just reinforces this whole idea that like it's gray. Nothing's black and white. Mm. And people are so complicated and and that there are no I mean, I hate to say I do sometimes feel like there are bad people, but mm-hmm. It's there. Like, it's just not black and white. Good people can do bad things. Yes, and and it's just complicated. And, and our idea of what's good changes all the time. And yeah, I think that's more than it. it more than anything, just it's really opened my eyes up to the incru- vast variety of human beings. Because <laughs> you have to empathize with these people that have done despicable things, and you have to f- you have to find a way in of being on. Lizzie Borden, for example, being on her side, you know, like it's like, okay, I have yeah, to humanize. But I, you can also judge them at the same time. I can be like, this is a fucking terrible person I'm playing. <laughs> but yeah, this is why she's doing it. But this is why she's doing it. And because mm-hmm. I think for the most part, right, when, you know, like Lizzie Borden, I was binging the Lizzie Borden series that you did. So camp. <laughs> I loved it. It's I'm so camp. good. Obsessed. It's very campy though. <laughs> in but in the perfect way. Yeah, it's it fun. Should, as yeah, it, it fun. should be. Okay, good, That's ex- it's the perfect tone. It's the perfect tone. Knows what it is. Knows what it's doing. Yeah, you can't really take it seriously because that would be strange. Yes, yeah. but it's exactly. It's um, and it was, but it was the perfect tone. That's all I'll say, and um. What like what do you think about like when you're like doing like the murdering stuff like just what it, like that it's campy and funny you're and, like this is funny and yeah. I'm just gonna I don't have to really like go there go there but I'm just gonna yeah because it's you know you take in the tone of whatever show it is you're doing yeah and you know if you keep that spirit alive then it's okay so like with Lizzie Borden it was just like this is so camp and so it's just pure fun because Lizzie Borden was and what there's a couple little I'm obsessed with just in general like female murderers and our obsession with female murderers like was what do you believe that she I don't know I mean was motivated by it's fun to think that she actually did it Mm -hmm. but when you really start getting into it Mm -hmm. it doesn't really seem like she did it yeah 
Because the whole idea that she had no blood in her clothing because she took her clothes off and committed this very salacious crime completely naked, uh, you know, it just mm-hmm. feels very much... And it was it was the Victorian age. Yes. If, when you read the whole the whole all of it together, you're mm-hmm. sort of like, oh, somebody somebody really fucked her over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I just, I just loved the, like the leaning into it on the of that the character when you played Lizzie Borden was like she kind of knew she was accused of this thing and used it in ways yeah. to co- sort of get what yeah, she wanted. She's like a crazy person. Like I love yeah. that. Yeah, you it was know, fun. and um, uh, but the lesbian dalliance I feel like was very played up too. Yeah. I mean, they wanted a lot of, they wanted it to have more sexuality to it. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't like doing it. So, you know, the so I was sort of more open to them. I don't know. It's easy to, I'm more comfortable to do that stuff with women. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, great, sure. Make her a lesbian. Throw, throw some ladies at me. It's fine. <laughs> um, I'm obsessed with Lizzie Borden. She was involved in Christian organizations and she was uh, she left thirty thousand dollars, equivalent to six hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty, to the Fall River Animal Rescue League. Yeah, she liked animals. Yep. Which is so fascinating because normally the telltale sign of a future serial killer is someone that abuses animals that's what I'm when saying. they're kids. I'm not so sure that she did did this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's where I get. There were a lot of like, up. you know, you know how they have this whole thing where a lot of crimes are not solved because we refuse to believe in the randomness of a stranger killing. You yes. know, they always look for someone who had a connection. Yes. Well, there were a lot of like, there were vagrants in the area. One, one in particular, he had weird issues with a business um, businessmen in the area. It seems like it was this vagrant. Hmm. who had bothered, who'd like come to the house earlier and sort of bothered them. And it seems more like it was that guy. But it's a more sexy story for yeah. it to be Lizzie. It was more fun. Was that like everybody. the first Amanda Knox? Okay, we're doing Justice for Lizzie's our new movement. Wait, was Lizzie <laughs> Borden like Amanda Knox before Amanda Knox? Kind of. I don't, I, like I said, I don't really know her whole story, mm-hmm. Amanda Knox. Mm-hmm. Falsely uh, accused, though. Y- yes, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. But it was like, it was a very similar thing. There was mm-hmm. like someone in the area. It was, and it was more fun to accuse her. It right? was like, she's, she's sexy, she's beautiful, yeah. she's young. Like, this is a way better story. It's going to sell more papers. Mm-hmm. It's Well, that is, yeah. yeah. And that is what happened with Lizzie Borden. It was like one of the first tabloid cases. Wow. Mm-hmm. Actually. Because, the, because the printing press had just... Started making newspapers. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed. She's like my incredibly intellectual history. <laughs> you know. Can we just talk about murderers for a second? Yes. <laughs> okay. So female murderers. Um, uh, sorry, your I know your publicists are watching. Um, <laughs> they know about my uh, the only obsession. thing, the only problem, the only th- I've advice. Pitches for some people for you to play. The only advice I've ever given <laughs> is is, and this started back in my twenties when I'd go to a photo shoot and they would be like, "Do don't do not cry and do not get naked on camera, <laughs> honey." <laughs> but not cry because I was like upset. I cried once in a photograph and all these people really liked it. So then after that, every time I would go to a photo shoot for editorial or whatever. They would have me cry, and they were like, "Eventually, people are gonna think there's something wrong with you." <laughs> <laughs> Why did you cry the original time? Because they were like, "It'll be a cool photo," and it was. It's a really good picture. <laughs> Obsessed with you. Um, that's str- yeah, stressful. No, but I'm just saying that's the only thing that they the, you can suggest that I play murderers. Elizabeth Bathory. Do you yes. know this story? The Countess. Yes. yes. And she that she was I read this book that was released about her back in nineteen like I don't know if it was the nineties or maybe the two thousands, but yeah. to, uh, the Blood Queen. Yes. Blood and this Queen. Hungarian woman, which is mm-hmm. fascinating because it's now there's lots of links to like the current conspiracy theory of like QAnon. QAnon's whole yes. you know, the conspiracy that they believe we eat babies. They eat out babies here in Hollywood. That's right? exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Eating those babies. It's so wild. I like, have put Placenta on my eyes. But that's before. bovine. It's bovine oh, it placenta. Is? I also was. Do you remember when there was that that serum that you could buy at the large Mark beauty supply? Uh, Epicurean. And it was, yes. um, it was supposed to be from the foreskins of babies. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled like blood. 
<laughs> this is why we're in this predicament in the first place. Uh, exactly. Um, yes, I, I understand. <laughs> I get why uh, actress is talking on Ellen about their skincare routine, plus a little weed, plus a couple Sam Adams yeah. equals killing babies to look young. It's um, it's a tricky one. Uh, because I do the, the, I have colostrum and placenta from Biologique Recherche, Recherche, that brand. Yes. And they're, but they're bovine, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Just eating, just using baby cows. So yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm, 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 like I'm not killing babies to stay young. I'm killing cow babies to stay young. You know, it's like still probably bizarre, but um, I had someone come up to me in the airport. We were in, I think it was in San Antonio. This group of kids came up to me and they're like, oh my God, you're Whitney Cummings. Hi, hi. Oh my God. And they're like, um, we hear that you kill babies and put their stop it, stop it, not put for their real. blood on your face, not really to stay young. No, and I was like, then why are you talking to me? Yeah, they <laughs> must not re- actually believe it. I, you can't believe. You, tell me, like, you no. must not believe it if you're saying that to me. You know what I'm saying? It, it was just such a. That's very strange. I feel like yeah. we're at an impasse here. Yeah. That I, also, thank you. <laughs> and then they offered her a baby <laughs> like, this is mine I don't want to raise it I know I'm like all the women I know in Hollywood are having fertility struggles and would kill a human for a baby not a baby to look young <laughs> no. you know what I mean it's yeah. like it's so hard to get a baby anyway at our age um, but there's some interesting links between Bathory and QAnon it came from a prominent noble family in Hungary Sources say she convinced her husband to build a torture chamber mm-hmm. in the castle they shared. She's said to have killed over 600 girls. Right, she would bathe in the blood of virgins. Mm-hmm. Yes, apparently. But then they believe that all of these stories were, there was um, like another faction that wanted to come in and rule and take the throne away from her. And so just like, um, just like, um, oh God, what is the name of the? We can Google. The, um, the so there's a, an emperor, Nero. So all yeah. the rumors about Nero, apparently it's a similar kind of thing where it's all, um, um, what's it called? I have baby brain. So do Mom me. brain. Yeah. When um, Babies propaganda, juice. like all propaganda to change the views, you know, to, to get the people on their side and against these people. So right, right. apparently Facebook. a lot of it was campaigning against her and making her look bad so that people would help them overthrow her because she was overthrown. Ooh, so this could be like a conspiracy. Yeah, just shit they said about her that wasn't true. Yeah. A lot of people say we named the bathroom after her too. Bathroom? Bathory. Bathroom. Oh, Bathory. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's, uh, um, Is that true? That's what I read. Oh, really? I mean, it could be a lie, but I did read hmm. it. And then, um, <laughs> okay, well, Andrea Yates, Houston woman mm-hmm. accused of killing her five children. Oh, yeah. I in remember that story. 2001. Her. Well, her, they, they kept making her have kids, and she already had terrible postpartum. Yeah, that, mm. was, po- that was postpartum psychosis. As a mother, as a, a mother now, and having one, what I had an experience <laughs> where a girlfriend of mine, we didn't talk for like two years. She just dropped off the face of the earth. I, I was like, oh, she's having a baby. Like, I guess she's busy, whatever. <laughs> And then she calls me and gives me this like apology. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was so mad at you. And I, like, I didn't even know it was happening. She's like, I had such bad postpartum. Da, da, oh. da. And that's when I really started. I didn't even know really what was happening. But like, what is the current um, new new in terms of postpartum? Is there really a know. plan for it? How do you diagnose it? I don't How know. Do you catch I it? had invasive thoughts after my baby mm-hmm. um, of like people and children being tortured, like mm-hmm. horrible invasive yeah. thoughts. And then um, I went to see a therapist like a year or two later and she said, oh, that sounds like you were experiencing postpartum, but I just dealt with it. Yeah, I have that too. When I'm like, um, Amanda Knox is staying with me and her baby's down. And when when I see a baby, my brain goes like, don't drop it, don't drop it. And I imagine dropping it. Yeah. I'll imagine all the horrible things. I had a really hard time with my baby because, you know, they can't lift their heads. They can't defend themselves in any way. And I kept having horrible invasive thoughts about babies being tortured. I I get the same thing and I'm like, it's in nightmares like nightmares serve a purpose like Mm -hmm. our dreams serve a purpose it's like our brain preparing for possible future scenarios yeah you know that could happen yeah and you know practicing preparing and um 
rehashing. And so I was like, okay, I guess this is happening. But since she's been staying with me, there's a baby staying in the house. And I'm like, the, the dog could do that. Like it, it's nightmares about the baby being smothered, me rolling over on it, me like all the things I could do badly. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, am I a psychopath? Or I think it's just my brain trying to not do those things. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought it was too. Mm-hmm. Like trying to make me more protected of the baby. Yeah. yeah. But so when... Um, yeah, just like exploring all the possible scenarios so that you don't do those things, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's not like bad thoughts. It's like these are good thoughts because they're telling you what not to, not to do yeah. or what is possible. Um, Leandra Ciansuli's children? I don't know her. She, uh, after a series of miscarriages and a fortune teller's prophecy that her children were at risk, she decided that she needed a, to sacrifice other <coughs> people in order to save them over the course of the year of 1939 to 1940 in Correggio, Italy. She killed three women and disposed of the bodies. She used caustic soda to disintegrate the bodies. And according to her court testimony, she turned one of the women's remains into soap, which earned her the nickname La Sapera for something de Correggio, the (laughs) soap maker. Okay. So she made soap out of three women how do you make soap out of dead people? <laughs> mm. Why is that? An- like, how do you know you're clean? What? How do you clean up? They should have nicknamed her that? Bubbles. <laughs> what? They should have nicknamed her Bubbles. <laughs> That's so much Bubbles. easier to say. <laughs> this is like a soap opera. Um, I just, there's something fascinating about, like, m- when men are serial kill, male serial killers, we think they're like, ha. Ted Bundy, like Zac Efron plays Ted Bundy. <laughs> I'm not into it. I'm like, it. <laughs> We're just like, that's hot. Like, the bunny tapes come out. Like, that's hot. Like, he loved her so much. He had to kill her. And then oh, when, no, I don't like it. And then if a woman is a serial killer, everyone's like, see? We knew it. PMS. Bitches be crazy. <laughs> I just think it seems even crazier when women do it because we're just really used to women being, you know, stereotypically nurturing. I'm just like, yeah, also more like, what woman has time? <laughs> it seems like strange impulse. I don't know. I but I don't. I really don't. Like, I mean, I'm fascinated by serial killers, but only because I want to figure out like, how they got into people's houses so they can never get into mine. <laughs> That's sort of my motivation. I Facetimed you, ambushed you. Yes, um, I was in bed. I was getting ready to go to sleep. I looked horrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, you're fine that because I should not. No, no, not at all. I mean, what's wrong with me that I'm like, great, I'll just accept this FaceTime call. <laughs> I know, like, the only thing weirder than me FaceTiming you <laughs> is that I it. Is that you accepted it. Yes, I know. Like, I know. <laughs> We're like, ah, ah. I don't think that's how that was going to go. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Sometimes I don't think about things. Yes, the events. Bachelorette was on and she said her uh, first like erotic. Oh, that was the Bachelorette. That was the Bachelorette. Okay, I couldn't yes. remember afterwards what you said, who she, <laughs> what you said about her. And she was talking about Casper and what like, I don't, you've talked about it too much already, but where do you fall in terms of paranormal activity? I believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really know what else. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I do believe in them. Like, are ghosts having sex with us right now? No, I really don't want to believe in ghost rape. (laughs) (laughs) You know about that actress that went to the SCAD? You know they do that thing at SCAD? You can go and, like, promote your show by being honored at SCAD. The Savannah, you know, in Savannah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently some actress went and um, I thought, I think she like wouldn't go to the ceremony the next, the night after the night in the hotel because she claimed she'd been raped by a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know is horrible, but that I'm laughing. But Time's up, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Believe women. <laughs> I have had that experience though where I'm like, I know it's haunted in here and please just don't rape me. Yes. Well, I, I just, I'm... <laughs> Because I did this thing uh, where we went ghost hunting, and I'm there was a REM pod, there was a, all the ways that you communicate with ghosts. I just feel like because you did that movie, you probably have a uh, uh, an abnormal amount of sort of incoming energy about that world. I don't know. I mean, I've had things happen to me in hotel rooms and places, mm-hmm. like abandoned insane asylums and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That. Abandoned mm-hmm. insane asylums? Oh, well, you know. Yeah, just- there's this one in Vancouver where everyone shoots. And we shot some you have yellow jackets in there. and But then 20 years earlier, I shot some of this other movie in there and feet chased me down the stairs. Like a disembodied shoes. 
Not great. No, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good experience. Wasn't Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> did not want to be there anymore. And then, so that, did you hear it? Like, yes, and then I turned around and it was like one of those staircases where there's like a wall in the middle and you like come down and go yeah. down. And, and as I looked around the corner, there were these two black shoes <sighs> coming down after me. It was not a good feeling. I saw, I remember, I still don't know how to tell the story because I was like, I don't, I believe in ghosts, I guess, but I, I don't say that I, I believe in one ghost because the one I saw. Right. I believe in a ghost. The ghost I met. <laughs> I don't know about all your other ghosts. I don't know about them. Right. Like, I don't, I need to see your papers. But uh, when I was a kid, I had um, some childhood trauma that was not ideal. Um, some negative attention from an older man when I was a kid. And I was in West Virginia and I was scared. And I came out of a hallway of this very old house in West Virginia. And I was jumped out of bed to try to get away from this person. And I went in the hallway and I saw an older woman in a nightgown, like a like a long nightgown that was like very lacy. Mm -hmm. Like it was like eight o'clock at night on a weekday. It wasn't like a dress. It was a nightgown. Like yeah. when you wore gowns, mm -hmm. you know? And she told me to come towards her and put pointed me into a direction where my aunt was, who was the safest person for me. And I just ran in there. And then that was it. That's kind of amazing. I thought so. Yeah. Like mm. guardian angel something. Yes, helpful ghost. And I'm like, helpful ghost. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is that like a figment of my imagination? Is that a trauma response? Whatever it was, like it felt very real to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows, but still. Sounds yeah. like you're describing Martha Stewart a little bit. It but. is Tilda Swinton. <laughs> oh, well, she is How a ghost. That's great. How dare you make my helpful ghost a felon, a criminal that doesn't pay taxes. <laughs> okay, first of all, we love Martha. Okay. I love Martha, too. We love We're Martha. standing Martha. She paid taxes. She insider traded. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. She uh, probably so did You know how you do it, too. I am heartbroken mm -hmm. to tell you we are going to take a quick, quick hiatus mm -hmm. from the dazzling, gorgeous, hilarious, incisive Christina Ricci. Mm. You need a break. It's overwhelming. Right. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to be enamored. There's too to much. Digest it. We need to take a minute because yeah. we need to talk about refueling. We need to just regroup. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to talk about Daily Harvest because this is this is a product that has truly changed my life. Mm -hmm. Changed my life because I, I'm sorry, I I can't do the ordering meal service stuff all the time. For, it's ridiculous. It's right. too expensive. Like right. to just or, you know, and then going to get something. I also don't have time to cook during the days. Like right. what, I'm, what are we Amish? Like right. I can't put a healthy meal together on my own. Right, me neither. I also, if I go to the grocery store to try to be healthy, right. I just I get distracted. <laughs> Distracted, I just come home with five bags of seeds and right. like olives. Right. I, I can't. And I forget yeah. the butter. I forget the kale. Right. I, for, I don't know what's in season. Yeah, this is the first time you've ever had real food in your fridge since I've known you. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's not just like salsa and pico de gallo. I know that mm -hmm. I used to only like eat because I thought like salsas just was. I was like, okay, this is a lot of different color vegetables. Right. This looks healthy. Right. And I would just eat. It was like I was always eating gazpacho. I was just eating salsa. Yeah. Like I did. It wasn't gazpacho. It was salsa. It was but, salsa. Yeah. I know, but if it's cold, it's gazpacho. Mm -hmm. And so this, like, daily harvest has changed my life. You know right. that women get half their calories from salad dressing. I did know that it's pure sugar. Yeah. So I would get salads, and I would mm -hmm. think it would be all healthy. And then I was like, Why do I have a headache? Why right, am I right. so tired? Like right. why? So daily harvest. You know that we love these. The bowls are a game changer. Mm -hmm. I just put a little little oil in them. A uh, little water. Put them in the... Uh, and that's cooking to me. You don't even need to do that. No. And then sometimes I put some extra hot sauce. Yeah. I put my... You get fancy. I put my nutritional yeast flakes oh. on top if yeah, I want you're, to. You're like Gordon Ramsay. Benton, you love the flatbreads, I thought. I love the flatbreads. And I love the balls. The, I have truly, you like honestly, the balls. Love, what yes. The it's all healthy. We don't have to like go to the farmer's market. We don't have to like... And they're already in a cup. The yes, lid is yeah. a cup. You just put a straw in it. Straw on it. And all, all organic right to your door. Yeah. Normally, to go organic, you have to drive two hours to a farm and, and break over a barbed wire fence mm -hmm. and yeah. steal from a farmer. Daily Harvest offers delicious 
harvest bowls, flatbreads, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. Daily Harvest takes literally minutes to prepare and never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And that goes for everything. My personal Daily Harvest fall favorite is the broccoli cheese bowl. I oh, just oh, yeah. love it. I'm very passionate about it. I love it very much. It's yeah. so good. I love it. Sometimes I'll do a little chip and eat it like a dip. Oh, I, I, I love it. I eat dips like soups and yes. soups like yeah. dips. Somebody needs, to, you, somebody needs to really fix you. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this is my favorite. The kale and sweet potato f- flatbread. It mm, is like so good. It's so good. It's like fall. It does taste like fall. Mm-hmm. Go to dailyharvest.com slash good for you to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash good for you up to $40 off your first box. Dailyharvest.com slash good for you. Now, uh, speaking of good for you, um, I just got a Stitch Fix box. Special <gasps> delivery. Here's what I'll say. We've been touring on the road. A lot of our fans that come to the shows, they wear Stitch Fix and they call themselves Stitchers. <gasps> That's cute. Which is, yeah, they call themselves Stitchers. It is really cute. So I am now officially a stitch Stitcher, but there's a new, uh, because I can't shop for myself. If mm-hmm. I'm left to my own devices, I'm just going to buy like vintage yellow Labrador denim t-shirts. vests. And I You've wear, seen the pictures. <laughs> I'm wearing a t-shirt. With David Bowie and uh, Megan Connolly on it. His teenage bride. I bought this, yeah, teenager I bought this and a man. before I knew she was 15 and he was 39 when they shot the movie. You bought it in the 90s? I know. <laughs> so it was before I knew. But so now Stitch Fix, I was definitely skeptical at first because I was like, I just, I always want to have a signature style. I always want to be a little off. I always want to be a little weird. I don't like dressing how everybody else dresses and Stitch Fix. You took the quiz for me, Benton. I don't know what you said, but everything they send is either like, for me, I like really classic, like Audrey Hepburn meets Catherine Hepburn and then just totally... Yeah. Loud isn't the you word. You like Audrey Hepburn and a clown nose. Yeah, that's right. I like I like clothes that are um, just uh, loud isn't the word. Mm-hmm. Fun, fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I want like. you want people to walk up and go, "That's fun." Yeah, yeah. I want people to be like, "Oh, that's like an art teacher in Albuquerque. Right. Love her." Yeah. You know. Well, Stitch Fix Freestyle is your trusted style destination where you can discover and instantly buy curated items based on your style, likes, and lifestyle. Look at these pants. Can I tell you? And here's what I love about Stitch Fix. Is like my brain, I'm such a creature of habit that there's certain things I would never think to buy, even if I saw them in the store, because I'm like, I just don't know what I would do with those. Right. But like these, these are eggplant purple pants. Love. I should wear these to every like stand-up show. Yeah, they're great. So whether you're looking for a brand you love or you want to try a new one, Stitch Fix Freestyle, you can shop a range of over a thousand brands personalized to your size and fit, but you're not just like going on 10 different websites mm-hmm. where it's like you have to put in your credit card information and then you have to like wait for it and then you can't return it. Like no. this is just custom. A stylist is taking your quiz and then mm-hmm. curating the box for you. Yes. Plus, there's no subscription required. So nice. Or subscription. Yeah. And they offer free shipping, returns, and exchanges. Genius. Get started mm-hmm. today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash Whitney. That's stitchfix.com slash Whitney to try Stitch Fix Freestyle. Stitchfix.com slash Whitney. Whitney, we love it. We love it. So come see us on tour wearing my fancy Stitch Fix. Mm-hmm. We are doing 40 more cities. Yes. We are doing a uh, stand up in every city for the next 40 weekends. We're doing 40 more shows. I mean, till April. So. Yeah. And if you, if you sell them all out, we'll stitch ourselves together. <laughs> We already are stitched together. We need to be surgically removed at this point. But come WhitneyCummings.com. I'm not going to blow up my Instagram feed and my Twitter with stand-up stuff. You know, all new hour, no politics. We don't talk about politics at all. We do meet and greets afterwards for free. There's no charge for a VIP. Come get merch that Stitch Fix would not dare sell or suggest to their (laughs) their Their stitchers. But you can buy. We will sign everything. Posters, books, Whitney DVDs, boobs. We're signing boobs. We're signing abs. We're signing butts. So come see us on the Touch Me Tour. And speaking of someone that I want to touch, back to Christina Ricci. So... In Yellow Jackets, okay, so I, okay, so Yellow Jackets is this is my favorite thing. Human nature when good people do bad things mm-hmm. because our reptilian brains take over and it's about survival. Yes. And when all the cultural mores are dropped because it's me or you, bitch. Yeah. So I don't want to give anything away, but is there anything? Is there anything that you feel like you like? learned making the show because it is so um 
We can't say savage anymore. Um, Why not? What's wrong with savage? Well, savage, I think calling someone a savage, the original oh, etymology of Native see. Americans. Yeah. I was just thinking in terms of animals. I know. Okay. We don't, it's like, it's one of those things you accidentally are like, oh, right. That was a thing that oh, was right. used to yeah. degrade people. Right, Didn't right, know that. Right, right, right. I forgot. Um, but that's like the okay. word I wanted to say to describe. Yeah. Um, brutal. Like the yeah, brutality of the show, but also the, the, it's so funny. It is so funny. Good. I mean, I, it's hard for me because I'm close to it, but I believe you. Okay. It's, it's you and Juliet Lewis, <laughs> first of all, already brain explode, but <laughs> that character that you're playing, how was she, like, how much of that was on the page? Well, she's written. Um, can we first? Can I first say the conceit of the show? Yeah, please. Um, basically, it's a uh, soccer team in the '90s, a very, very successful uh, uh, soccer team that's high school, high girls. school girls yeah. that's doing really well, winning all the things, mm -hmm. is going to go play championships. It's like a. I think it's a national championship somewhere, so they have to take a private plane. They get a private plane. Plane crashes in the middle of. I believe it's supposed to be Northern Canada. I thought so too. Yeah. Okay. Northern Canada crashes. They're stranded. You know. And there's like a supernatural element to where they crash. Where they crash. Yes. So it's. And. Uh, yeah. A lot of what. Lord happens. of the Flies. Yes. Yeah. And then there's a, like the right amount of um, mental illness amongst the girls. And also the supernatural element of where they crash. And just enough that things go really crazy. Really crazy Lord yeah. of the Flies ain't shit compared to the show. Yes. Yeah. And they, yeah, they do terrible things. And uh, the so so we see the characters in the 90s and then you play a character um, later and it, the, she's so funny. Yeah. I mean. You're so funny. She is, I mean, she's fun to play. Um, I don't love, again, because I don't like people liking me. I actually don't like playing comedy. <laughs> Everybody on the show was always like, you're so funny. And I was like, I wasn't trying to be funny. Um, whatever. <laughs> how dare you? Um, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a jerk. Um, but... Yeah, the kind of the the point of her character is very much like I always describe myself as like a I'm like a murderous golden retriever where like I'm a, if you see a golden retriever you get to pet it, love it, immediately assume it's going to be nice to you, but what if that golden retriever actually wanted to kill you? Yeah. And so that is sort of the idea of Misty, the mm -hmm. character, where she's like completely innocuous seeming um but horrible, horrible desires inside of her. But there's an innocence to her that it felt so real. Just the idea of like, like this person who has, you know, her morals in the right place, but is like, I think that most psychopath, do you think she's a psychopath or a sociopath? I think she started out and there's something off about her. Uh -huh. um, maybe a little sociopathy or sociopathy, sorry, where she can't quite connect or... Or um, she doesn't quite have the same experience that everybody else does. But, of course, that leads to her wanting to belong so badly and have the same experience that uh -huh. everyone else is having because she's aware of the fact she's not having it. Um, but then because she has no social currency, she's not cute, she can't connect, so she can't, like, make jokes that other people appreciate. And yeah. She can't really be part of the group and, you know— what that would hap what would happen to you in school and she's just rejected time and time again and then i think after they get back from once they're rescued i think she really goes back to having no power no place no value and after 25 years of this she has created her own um her own satisfying world with her own rules and what she has I like a bird about named her Caligula. Yes, yeah, she does. What I like about her is like even though nobody's nice to her and nobody's her friend, she's still gonna have the best time she can, no matter where. She's entertaining herself. She doesn't need another person to talk to, mm -mm. really. Um you don't like her jokes, too bad. She's gonna laugh at them. Love it. Um and I, but I think that she's, she's very living much, her best life. Yeah, and she realizes nobody's going to be nice to her. Nobody's going to give her what she's always wanted. So she's going to give it to herself. So that involves a lot of manipulating, forcing, and tricking. 
And she feels justified because if they would have given it to her to begin with, she wouldn't have had to do these like, things. Like, you're, I'm all, I've just, this is, I'm doing what I had to do. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's interesting because when uh, serial killers and psychopaths that have murdered, I'm going to talk for a minute so you can hydrate, um, are interviewed, they don't say, like, I murdered that woman. They say it more as if they solved a problem, Uh huh. you know? So yeah. it's more like, well, I had to kill her. She was screaming. Yeah. It was like, I just had to stop the screaming. Mm-hmm. So I had to kill her. I didn't want to kill her, but she was scre- making too much noise. You know what I mean? It was like, I did this horrible thing just to solve this problem that I had. And in a way, there's like a, a benevolence to um, behind the horrific deed of like, you know, when, I don't think I'm spoiling the show, but when she, she has to do something, like she has to chop someone's limb off. It's like, Someone has to do it. Yes. I'm just going to do it because, or else this person will die. Yeah. I have to kill this person so they don't die. <laughs> yeah, she's I have very to, practical. I have to harm Pragmatic. this person. I have to traumatize this person so they don't die. Like, yeah. what What are we doing? There's like, like a immediate ability to like prioritize mm-hmm. and that's slightly sociopathic that is kind of common sense in a way. Yeah. And there's something so funny about how not emotional. Yeah, she's just not very emotional about that kind of thing. And she wants what she wants and will take whatever steps and doesn't really understand why anyone else would care. Like watching, there's a scene where uh, you're on a date, uh, Misty's on a date with this guy. And I I learned so much from this character's exchange. It was just like, do you want to go home later? What, do you not like me? You're not attracted to me? (laughs) Like, if we could all just be that direct, we would save so much time. But I also think with her, she's at a place where she knows nobody's going to like her or fall in love with her. And she's almost playing games when she does those kinds of things. It's like, you know, men, like, well, not all men, but some men, it's like, can you get that girl to sleep with you? I think Misty's sort of like, I wonder if I can get this guy to sleep with me. I know he doesn't want to, but can I win? Like, this is just a game to me now. Yeah. Like, I'll just play yeah. like play with you the way that you play with women. Yeah. Well, because I think she's just bored and people have never been nice to her. And so she entertains herself. And she's so thrilled when all this bad stuff starts happening again. I love that. And I love, it, you know, because it reminded me of it. I'm in this, like, place where, you know, look, I don't want bad things to happen to anyone. Um, the last couple of years have been, you know, wild uh, for everyone. But, like, you know, I lost my dad. I am just turned 39. Like, I've been through a lot. I've had a lot of family heartbreak. And there's kind of this excitement in relationships now, which like this fearlessness and freedom Mm -hmm. when you can't get your heart broken because it's already so broke that there's nowhere to go. Like, you can't hurt. You're invincible. Yeah. There's a a fun of like, what are you going to do? Break my heart. (laughs) Like, you (laughs) could actually start having fun dating. Like, what are you going to do? Break the shards of broken glass that are of my heart? Like, go for it. Like, there's that. Like, I looked at her and I I just locked. I loved that, like, playfulness of like. She has nothing to lose. She doesn't care. I'm going on a date and like, I'm going to make this fun for me. Yeah. Whether I, what I, nothing I can do is going to make you like me because all you do is probably watch porn and you probably want for that sports. What, you, you know what I mean? It is nice to be in that place. Yes. Yeah. There's a certain freedom of it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm not going to let this be a waste of my time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to have fun no matter what. I'm going to yeah. have fun no matter what. And I'm not going to like give you all my power. Yeah. And I really, I've always loved characters like that. I love people like that. My mother's very much like that. No matter what's happening, we're going to have a good time. Like we're just, like I don't you're not I'm not gonna allow this contagion to get to me yeah like I'm having a blast mm-hmm. but I do think that comes from just being re- really like used to things being shitty <laughs> what is the deal with people that have birds as someone I don't know but the bird was <laughs> The, I believe the bird was actually my suggestion because I was like you know like weird people who have birds dude what's up. I don't really know. I mean, I will say that having worked with a few birds now, they are kind of sweet. Um, they can be really affectionate. I would not have birds because I don't like the idea of something that just drops poop everywhere. Um, but that's pretty much it. Have another baby. <laughs> and eventually they stop. And they wear eventually, diapers. That's a very good point. <laughs> um, so... I just tried to Google, why would anyone have a bird? <laughs> why do they have birds? Why Does would it, anyone... Google tell us? Why would anyone... For company. Um, 
let me know when. Uh, I, ju- I don't really like the idea of keeping anything in a cage either. Yes. I think there's something a little creepy about that. Why would anyone <laughs> have a bird? It's wild because um I like them outside. I like the idea that you can keep them around. Yeah, eagles, like owls. Yeah. I'm very I'm obsessed with owls. Are you gonna put up an owl nest thing? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I want them to come live here, mm-hmm. but I don't want to like have them on my arm no, and like I don't put wanna, them in I, a cage. I don't like the idea of trapping anything. Why would anyone want a bird? I hope Google just Birds writes are back and writes, what's wrong with you? Birds are, <laughs> did you mean Betty Ford? <laughs> birds are extremely intelligent, easy to train, and social. Being intelligent makes birds easier to train than other animals. Since they are so smart, they're interesting to watch. I feel like a bird person wrote this. Definitely. I feel like a bird wrote <laughs> Is this. Is it Wikipedia? <laughs> this bird was wrote written it. by it? a bird. <laughs> a bird pecked this out on Wikipedia. You can't trust things. Like, it's Being intelligent. The, the bird's case. like, birds are so cool, right? <laughs> the bird's the a bird pecked this out. Look, being intelligent makes birds easier to train, comma, than other animals, co- period. <laughs> That's not English. No, that, no. A, bir- a bird wrote That's that. Bird. So, Emily. <laughs> That's bird. I'm very obsessed with vultures, but Emily, what are you going to tell us about There crows? was a vulture in my neighborhood. <gasps> what died oh, there? Vultures. It was my on agent. The, <laughs> it was on the um, you know, the telephone pole thingamajig. Amazing. I can't stop saying thingamajig. I'm sorry. I love that. I hate it. Let's bring it back. Oh. Um, I love vultures because there's an amazing TED talk. This woman, um, uh, in she's from Texas uh, somewhere, and uh, she uses vultures to solve crimes because wow. vultures. Oh, I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. So excited to say this. She, so if someone's dead in the woods and there's vultures, Uh right? Because they're scavengers. They can only eat things that have already been dead. They basically rely on other things dying in order Why is that? Um, Because they're not hunters. They don't have the, the, the way hawks and eagles and falcons have like, Mm -hmm. they can see two miles away, right? They can't hunt. Got it. They've just evolved to just be scavengers. They eat the leftovers, Mm -hmm. which is actually used to be very, uh, useful because so much was left because humans we couldn't even open the bones up and they would get all the marrow because that's where all the real good stuff is that's why their their vultures brains are so big and that's how our brains evolved was to eating the bone marrow right, right? you know the first things vultures eat hmm. the heart the eyes and the butthole mm-hmm. why the they're the butthole? softest tissue mm-hmm. to get into huh. the body yes so if they know they're going to be if, if it's already done so but if so vultures because they have to be economical with what they eat uh, and they only, you know, they could not eat for another month, whatever. Mm-hmm. The most nutritious things are brains and intestines. Those are the most nutritious, the the highest value. So if there is a vulture feather 30 feet away from the corpse, it was probably a gunshot wound because it meant the brain oh, when, was over oh, there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so they that can narrow it down to wherever the vulture feathers are yeah. will tell you what the where the brain went. That's so, yeah. Nice. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that is really cool. So cool. I'm obsessed. <laughs> um, Emily? Yes? Uh, Emily has a lot to say about crows. <laughs> what about crows? Crows are just the <laughs> smartest animal other than, like the smartest non-primate animal. Right, don't they recognize people's faces? They recognize people's faces. Mm-hmm. They re- they hold grudges. Yeah. They like celebrate their dead. They bring like how do they celebrate? They bring candy wrappers. (laughs) They just pictured a crowd. They bring dancing. They bring candy wrappers to the bodies of their dead brethren. They also try to have sex with them, which is not very smart. But (laughs) they some humans do that too. They (laughs) are okay. I can't ever say this properly, and I get a lot of (laughs) flack for it. But at at the stage of their evolution, when we were at the equivalent stage of human evolution. The tools they're using are more advanced than ours were. So, like, by the time they catch up to us, they're going to be, like, way more advanced. But will they be able to since they just have two legs and beaks? (laughs) Well, I don't know. We just had two legs at one point. I see what you mean. I'm bummed. We'll never see it. (laughs) We have two legs now. (laughs) Crow. I mean, some of us. Um, Crows and ravens 
are some of the smartest animals in the world. They control their- packs of wolves. Did I already say that? I'm very excited about that. <laughs> How? Okay. How? So I love that someone had to Google why people want birds, and now we're all like, have you heard about birds? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, crows and ravens are some of the smartest animals in the world, with their intelligence considered on par with chimpanzees. The yeah. new Caledonian I crow. I hate monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So, I just hate them. Let's That's because you know. <sighs> yeah. They can get you. Yeah. They can rip your face clear off your head. I had a baby monkey that almost ripped my boob off once. Of course. Um, I was just like, and I had been talking about how much I hated monkeys before. <gasps> and everyone said it was my fault. <laughs> it the monkey could oh feel God. how much I hated it. Do you want to meet to the monkey? <laughs> Do you remember? I didn't do anything to the monkey. It was a scene and the monkey leapt over and hung off my boob. What movie is this? <gasps> that monkey's racer. canceled. I know. They're like, well, it's because you have such a bad attitude about monkeys. I was like, I mean, come on. I feel like yeah. this is a you thing. <laughs> Are you saying it's, it's not you, it's me? This I'm is not, my fault. <laughs> but that is I so- don't like them. And I had to hold a lot of them when I was younger because <laughs> all they <laughs> no, because the animal trainers at on movies would always have a monkey with them for some totally bizarre reason. And then they'd be to like, get laid. take a picture with my monkey. And as the child actress, you'd have to be like, oh, you great. That's so great, this monkey. <laughs> and they just would be so full of like, uh, it's just like you could tell they were like seething and they hated you and they were st- their hands are so strong. I found it to be really upsetting. And then <laughs> there were all the stories later about people having... Mm-hmm. Things ripped off by monkeys that they were rescuing and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yes. And they were being abused on by that trainer. So mm-hmm. they were pissed. Right. But they didn't want to be there. Yeah. It's just too, too much. Too much. Yeah. It's a, too much. Yeah. Well, look, I did tell you about, have I talked about how a very famous magician? Uh-oh. David Copperfield. No. Sent me a video. David Blaine. Yes. Of okay. him <laughs> training crows. <gasps> All right. No. Yeah, and he was. It was like a. He was training the crows to pick up a card, based on what the card was. It was like King of Hearts, and it would go get the King of Hearts, like from a deck of cards. Well, you know those crows are holding a grudge now. (laughs) I mean, that's that is wild. Yeah. Why did he send you a video of this? Look, it's a jungle out there. (laughs) Okay, we're training it. Raya, Raya wasn't up yet. <laughs> okay, right. Bumble wasn't popping yet. Okay, we had to do what we had to do to get by. <laughs> we had to meet weirdos the old-fashioned way. I remember when he used to do magic at Balthazar in 1997. That's so. That is, he started in New York doing that like street yeah, magic when stuff. When we would go to clubs and stuff, there were, all of a sudden there were like magicians that would come to your table, mm-hmm. and we'd give them really hard times. <laughs> really hard times it's so fascinating like i in comedy there's so many people that i sort of started with that i'm like that for whatever reason they're not doing it anymore or they're um didn't have what get what i think they should have gotten for whatever reason the Mm -hmm. universe etc but is there anyone that you're like i just what happened to that person like there's certain comics where I'm like, what happened to that guy? And I'll follow up with them. And they're like, oh, I just, you know, I became a banker and whatever. And I just. There like, are people, but I don't know how to get in touch with them. So I've never interesting. followed up. Interesting. Yeah. Is there anyone that um, you feel like you've been like consistently grown with? Like, and been like, I see you and have grown together and it's been cool with? Like it's Yeah, I mean, there's lots of people that I feel like we all were around at the same time and came up in the same kind of like group of people, you know, like, um, I don't know, we were all young right around the same time. Like Kirsten Dunst, I've known her since she was three, I think I met mm. her at an audition. I was six or seven. I was seven. She was probably f- three or four. It's wild. And I remembered this child forever. She was, we, we, before she became a famous actress, my mother and I used to refer to her as that gorgeous little girl with the beautiful hair. Cause she was like this charming, gorgeous little girl that I was, had these beautiful curls and I don't know. It's like what Hitler wanted. I know it's weird, but as a seven year old, I was obsessed with her <laughs> and then she became an actress and I was like, Oh my God, it's that girl. <laughs> yeah. I get it. She's just got that star quality. Really? <laughs> yes. I just watched the Brittany Murphy documentary. I did too. It was weird. It's weird. I don't know what to believe. 
I mean, that guy, I had seen him. He had done a lot of really shady, disgusting things. Like, it, it, we knew he was bad news, you know, just. But ultimately, it's not a big, it's not the death that is the scandalous thing. It's the way he used her. Right, because really they just didn't go to the doctor. They were doing too many drugs, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and then and then when, like, who knows how long it took them to call the police because they were worried that it right, was right, a right, right. And then he died of the same thing because he was just living the same life that mm-hmm. they had been living. Yeah, the, the, so it's not like a huge mystery or um, or a conspiracy that he died of the same exact thing, right? It That's just what I got from it. Pisses me off. Yes, it's very unfortunate and. That someone's desire to be happy and have a family and have a life and all these things and be loved mm-hmm. can lead them right into the lion's den is really unfortunate. But it is just wild because it is, you know, we were talking downstairs earlier about like just like seeing I want to be the person that gets hurt every now and then, but sees the best in people. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just be that person. I'd rather be the person yeah. that it's like, you know, like believes in someone and gets my heart broken. I don't want to be the person that's always assuming the worst and cynical. And, you know, I just don't want to live that way, you yeah. know? And, um, and it was, it's weird because like amazing actors, I think have this antenna, uh, this incredibly hypersensitivity. That's, that's incredible. Like I directed a movie and I had no idea what I was doing. And um, I literally, they, I wrote the script with Neil Brennan who co-created the Chappelle show and they were like, we'll only make it if you direct it. And I was like, okay. I didn't know what I was doing. I went home. I went on YouTube and went like, how do I direct a movie? <laughs> like direct a movie? <laughs> Question mark. And like moviephone.com. <laughs> and Christopher Nolan uh, was like giving these like to camera like BTS interview things. And he said in one of them, uh, you cannot lie to an actor because they'll know. Because mm-hmm. it's their, they their their bullshit detector is like no other. Like good actors, you so if you need to, you know, move a scene because you're losing light and you're running out of money or there's a problem with the crew or there's like a union issue, you can't be like, hey, we're actually gonna do it over here now because I just I feel like the character would like be having tea. <laughs> they're gonna be like they're gonna stop trusting yeah. you. No, yeah, and you're gonna yeah. lose the trust. Yeah, they're just that makes tell, sense. Don't treat them mm-hmm. like children. Right. Just yes. say, hey, we're losing light. I'm running out of time. It's always a good idea. We have to compromise. Yes. I, I, it's going to be just as good, but what we rehearsed is not going to happen. Whatever. Yeah. We couldn't get the monkey mm-hmm. because Christina was too mean to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Christina was so mean to the monkey that we don't have a monkey, so now we're going to use a squirrel. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And um, and that... Squirrels also, though, murderous. <laughs> <laughs> that does remind me, though, Sarah Silverman had that joke in one of the specials about how squirrels, when they, they they're dumb, so they plant their nuts and yeah, then yeah. that's and they to eat later they and they forget where they are and that's how trees grow oh, oh. well I mean good for trees <laughs> I guess I are they know. dumb or really conscious about the earth well I had a, I mean not to go away from the Chris Nolan thing which please do get back to <laughs> um, <laughs> no. um but I watched that, you know, they are, um, what is it? Omnivo- omniv- omnivorous. They are, are um, omnivorous. They will eat whatever they can. And because they have such a large food supply in places like Southern California, because there's no winter, um, they become bigger than other rodents. And so then they eat other rodents. So in my backyard, mm-hmm. I watched a squirrel once throw a rat out of a tree the rat was like, nee, nee, like broke its back or whatever. The squirrel came down, grabbed it, took it up onto a branch and ate it while it was still alive. <gasps> I'm not kidding. It's true. <laughs> it happened. And that is what we call a bummer. <gasps> yeah. And the squirrels are territorial. So this one squirrel still lives in my backyard and I hate it. And it will like <gasps> scream at me. They also try bark. To intimidate me. They squirrels do bark. Like the noise they make is like a, they bark like a dog. Yeah, they. It it's tried really to, weird. We'd try, the squirrel would try to intimidate me and scare me away from like I have. A, I had a place in my backyard where I like to go, and I would like meditate and talk to the animals. And the squirrel would be like, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> "Like go fuck yourself! I'm bigger than you." But yes, I don't like them very much. I mean, squirrels are kind of arrogant because they are kind of just like fancy rats. Mm-hmm. They're rats with a and everybody feather thinks boa. they're cute. I know they mm-hmm. get more credit than they deserve. I agree. Yes. Anyway, so Chris Nolan said you can't lie to actors because their antenna is so accurate. 
some squirrels fly. That's true. I, also, I enjoy a flying squirrel. Like, that's special. Also, <laughs> no, it is. Also, we underuse the word. He's a little bit squirrely. It's true. I like squirrely. It's squirrely a great skin. way to describe yeah. someone that's like shifty or shady or sketchy. Mm-hmm. Squirrely. Yep. It's like that obviously means squirrels are sketchy because that's why they we have are. that as an adjective. Yep. They're definitely sketchy. No, but I was, yeah, I was just thinking about it. And I was like, because Brittany Murphy was such a good actress. Like, how did you not feel how to- raw, off that was? You know but what I mean? Don't you think that her desire over it definitely clouded? Yes. I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, and character yeah, you're doing this podcast. problems. <laughs> I have misjudged a lot of people. And I think it's just that you want so badly for something to be what you want it to be and to work out that you ignore. Yes. And you also minimize. You're like, well, how bad could it be? Mm-hmm. How b- Really? How bad could this get? And, and I can fix this or I yes. can put up with that. And yes. I've already been, I've already put a year into it. Yes. And as women, it's like, I only have three years left to have kids. So right. I'll just, it's fine. I'll and you that assume that things can't be worse than what you've already gone through. <laughs> as someone that has not true. an incredible like antenna, intuition, gut, like what would you say are some red flags in people like to date in dating? Um, I think anytime people have outsized reactions to things whoa you know like if someone gets too angry about something that you're pretty sure it wasn't a big deal that's such a good one yeah I used to when I was dating I would have these moments where I'd be sitting across from someone and I'd be like this is when I should get up and leave this is it right now Mm. and I used to have this joke about um the this elf that you could like a whistle and like an elf not an elf it was more like a troll that you could it was the emotionally unsafe elf that anytime you felt emotionally unsafe but you were not able to stand up for yourself you could summon this elf that would show up and just be like yeah no that that that's a no is not okay <laughs> and we are going home young lady <laughs> like um, peter dinklage just comes up with i mean yeah and uh, so I've had so many moments like that where I was like, where I've been like, yeah, I know that this is when I should blow the whistle and get like summon someone to come and like pick me up or I should go home. But, but I had this weird thing in me, I think, that was really when I was younger, like, is is this really happening? What else is going to happen? Yeah. Like a weird, such a separation from myself that I was able to stand across the room and be like, but I kind of want to see what happens next. I wanted to, I'd like it, a little bit of like a, I mean, I, I, you know, was addicted to adrenaline. I was like, great. Let's go through this haunted house. Great. Yeah. And I just think too, I had trouble actually feeling the reality of things. Like I would sort of numb yourself I didn't feel it yeah I was so able to be all of a sudden across the room watching it that like if you don't actually feel upset it's hard to take action do you know you what can I mean? like disassociate yeah I can do that but why, why I think it's from childhood trauma correct yeah yeah pretty much so yeah I've always been like that so there was this part of me that was like oh wait but this is so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. But now I'm over here like, uh, and I'm safe. Yeah. But I got to watch so this show. This can all, see what this can all continue. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great TV show. <laughs> Which is really interesting. I can't but, leave now. It's just getting good. Yeah. And I think it takes a while. I think if you're like that, you have to get to a place where you're like, okay, the consequences of this ultimately Ultimately, this doesn't end well. So I know we, how this story ends. Let's not watch this show. We're gonna I've be up, seen this. We're gonna be up all night. We won't be able to sleep. Let's turn this off. <laughs> and you're married. Yes, I am. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> I actually met someone really fantastic. So I mean, your hair looks. I'm so jealous. You're married <laughs> to someone that does hair. Like yeah, life hack. If you have bangs, the only way to have cute bangs is to marry someone that can bang you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what helps me get aroused? What? Death. And that brings the liquid. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to be very honest with you. I. Uh Uh-oh. I know. This never goes well. 
A couple years ago, a friend of mine, Sophia Amoroso, she's Girl Boss. She wrote the Girl Boss book. Mm -hmm. Netflix show. Netflix show, Girl Boss. She sent me a text and was like, you got to invest in this company, Liquid Death. And she sent me a picture of the can. It's it's water in this gorgeous can mm -hmm. with this gold skull on it. It's mm -hmm. like me in a can. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you got to invest in this company. It was before I knew how to invest. It was before I like had the money to invest. I was like, yeah, I'd love to, but I don't. I don't even know what you're talking about. I was like, can I buy that? And she's like, no, no, no. Do you want to invest in the company? I was like, I will buy that. Please mm -hmm. send it to me. Like, right. I didn't understand what, how, what, how investing worked yet. So I'm the idiot that didn't invest in liquid death. I'm the idiot that... Well, maybe I, they'll let you do it now. I don't... I feel like that ship has sailed. Do I mean, you, whatever. Do I, you feel like your grandpa? My grandfather passed on investing in McDonald's when the... He would have only... It would have only cost him $200 to have something like 5,000 shares. And so... So thank God or we wouldn't be here. Liquid Death is the one that got away from me because I did not know about investing at the time. And it is now... I mean, if you don't have... If you're not drinking this water, you're just a loser. Mm -hmm. It's like... I love it. I like that they look like strange tall boys of beer. That's, that's what yeah, I think is cool. You can drink them at a party and stuff, yeah. and nobody's like, you want a beer? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is also, that, this is the new sparkling one. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I bought this yet. I, I bought this yesterday, and it when you buy it, like you go get it, everyone's like, what's that? Right. Like it's it's I'm trying to think it's like it's like the drink equivalent of like riding a motorcycle or like mm -hmm. having a cool tattoo. And now it's like Theo Von, Segura, Bert, everyone's got this, you know, it's it's just like, it just makes me feel cool. I know that's a dorky thing yeah, to say. Yeah, it's like straight edge. It's, it's like mountain dead. spring water also, from the Also, I Alps. love the stories. Like if you follow them on Instagram and stuff, there's all these stories people send in about them being pulled over and police thinking it's a beer <gasps> or like getting carded when they buy it. Like it's just really funny. Because it's too punk rock. And the marketing is like so trolly. They're just like such a fun company. I also, by the way, we're three people that hate water. We do not drink water enough. And I'm, I'm sorry. I know this is maybe childish, but I cannot drink a water if, if it's a cool bottle mm -hmm. like this makes it makes me, you want to shotgun it it makes me yeah. want to drink water like it just makes me feel cool uh and why is it called liquid death because it will brutally murder your thirst love and their infinitely recyclable tall boy cans are helping to bring death to plastic bottles and guilt mm -hmm. they also donate 10 percent of their profits from every can to help kill plastic pollution which is freaking awesome so get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash whitney that's liquiddeath.com slash whitney or grab some at whole foods sprouts oh, and 7-eleven that's killer back really? to christina <laughs> but so is there any so he's a hairstylist is there and is it ever is he ever not thinking about your hair or is it well, that's the thing. He doesn't really think about it unless I ask him, ask him about it. Oh. He's not that kind of person. That's so but he's really fantastic. And he has built, he builds things in the house. And he actually that's can so sew. He sewed a lot of my child's Halloween costume this Come year. Come on. He cut his hair into a mohawk and does his hair, does, makes my son's hair a mohawk every day before school. Yeah. That is the cutest. He's really, really wonderful. And when since I've been pregnant, like he just does everything for me. It's really horrible. Horrible. I feel so bad. <laughs> Did, <laughs> I feel why? So bad. Why? Because it's like I Sorry, should hold on. So Oh hi. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ambushing Christina. Did you get any warning? <laughs> hi guys. So this oh, is hi. John Legend and uh <laughs> Chrissy Teigen. Hi, Hello. I saw pictures of you as Wednesday. You looked great. Oh my God, Luna. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> they dressed up as Wednesday Adams. I know. I saw pictures. You got everybody looked oh, fantastic. Did you see her dancing along to me playing the piano? Yes. <laughs> she, was, she, was, she was unrehearsed, but she was like she knew at that moment she was supposed to stomp, and it works very well. <laughs> So cute. Yeah. Where are you guys going? Nice to see you, Christina. This is Chrissy. Hi. Hi. Nice you. We met a long time ago at somebody's party once. <laughs> years and years ago. That's amazing. <laughs> We're driving the kids home from school. Oh, yeah. Very morning. Very Pick up. <laughs> Christina's pregnant. Nine months. Congratulations, oh Christina. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
I'm 34 weeks today. Oh my gosh! Yeah. It's like tomorrow you're going to have a baby. I I'm wish. Like, <laughs> I gave birth at 34 weeks. Huh? Yeah. 34 and 36. Something what? Like it, that. Oh, I didn't hear them. Oh. Oh, you birthed at 34 weeks. I wish that I asked my doctor if he would take mine out earlier, and he said no. Do it at 38, then you won't rip. Well, actually, I still ripped incredibly. But I'm having worry. a C-section, so okay. I'm just having a C-section. We're going to just, it's going to be fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh, so cute. We love you. Oh, my God. Love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye. 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 Um, oh, I feel like I hung up too soon. <laughs> she was like, I'm almost sent in. Was that too bad? She was like, I think you're, and I'm done. I, I used know. you. <laughs> Why do you think there's, I don't want to ask you about the Adams Family because it's like, I just feel like your life is just No, like, it's fine. It's it's more like, why do you think it's becoming a th in the zeitgeist again? Nah. Um, well, I mean, they made animated movies out of it, so not all the kids know about it. But Ah, uh, yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Because I, I do find, though, mm. that like our generation like the things that we were into in the 90s mm -hmm. are kind of coming back. Yeah, there's a lot of 90s stuff because, right Because like now. we have, like, I mean, I'm wearing a Betsy Johnson dress. Like, it, it, oh, I cut it. Well, bad to cut it. Um, and uh, I have a Wednesday Adams story from childhood. Oh, really? Do tell. I sure do. Uh-oh. I was a big fan of Wednesday Shocker. Adams, And once in the fifth grade, in Perry County, uh, Tennessee? Uh, yes, in Perry County, Tennessee, my small town. We were at PE class, and I kept tying all the jump ropes into nooses, like she mm -hmm. had that in the film. And uh, my, <laughs> and I was under the bleachers, and I was just hanging all these nooses under the bleachers <laughs> under jump ropes. <laughs> and my teacher came around, and she was like, what are you doing? But I didn't hear her, and so I was like, I'm just doing her. slip knots. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I just kept tying them, and she was apparently yelling at me to, like, come talk to her, but I just couldn't hear her. It was, like, recess. I was just making my nooses in peace. And, um... She got very distraught, called my parents, and I had to go to four weeks of therapy because <gasps> they thought I was going to kill myself. Oh, no. And they had the preacher come and tell me that uh, Wednesday Adams and, and the Osbournes and all these things were evil and that I couldn't partake in them anymore. Oh, no. Which didn't stick, but no, it happened. Yeah. That's a really harsh punishment for just tying some knots. Well, I was pretty excited about it. <laughs> I was punishment? like, this is what would happen to Wednesday Adams, too. <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah. It is interesting. <laughs> it was better in my head, but it did happen. It is interesting when like things get super relevant again. Like the the I think maybe it's just more our desire for nostalgia or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Things are getting so weird and, and modern that we're like, I want to go back to the thing that, you know, that like Makes cozy. Makes you feel safe. Yeah, yep. totally. Yeah, I don't know. My son is really into the Adams Family also, and I know it ha doesn't have anything to do with me being involved. Do we know what your next baby is? Yeah. Okay, don't feel the need I to I can't say decide don't, don't. if I should or not. Don't, don't, then don't. Okay. But can we do, can I guess the names? Yeah, sure. I've guessed... Two friends' names exactly, baby names exactly. Okay, you know what? I'm having a girl. Who gives a shit about <laughs> saying it? Or not? I can't. I can't do the whole like. Well, I don't know. By the way, at least you're not the person that's like, I want to be surprised. No, I have enough surprises in my life. You so know I what? Need, I don't need that one. <laughs> Thanks. So. Also, like, I don't want to. I don't want. I need to buy you a present. You, you need will, to tell me the. I, that's I don't want my thing. I'm like, I need to. I have to plan. I don't want to come hang out in your yellow baby room. I hate the color yellow. Or the moss green because you didn't want to do pink or blue. I'm Let's okay just, with green though. A pistachio green. Pistachio green, I, I like. But like, one. adult. Like, just let me. I need to know what to buy your child. Yeah, just I tell understand. me. Yeah. Find out. This isn't mm -hmm. about you. No, I feel the same way. What I. I just want to know. What happened when you heard you were having a girl? I was really excited because I already have a boy. So cool. So yeah, I figured it'll be good. Already a bodyguard. Okay, so can I do, but let's I guess. I already have so many crazy things where I'm like, yeah, she's never having one of those. And guess what? We're ne Like Halloween came and I was like, like I'm ever going to allow my child to do slutty Halloween. <laughs> Like, what the That's fuck? That's my thing. Kind of. <laughs> but I was like, I will ruin that. No idea baby will for ever her. be as cute as Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> you should dress her up as Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> Can I interview the vampire? <laughs> she could be a little vampire. It'd be cute. Um, it's interesting. I mean, Emily, you know a lot about this. Like, the toxic, like, princesses and this and that. It's sort of like, 
She can be a princess if she wants to. As long as it's like everything. But also, then be a superhero. Yeah, exactly. Like, even the Barbie thing, where now they have like plus size Barbie. It's like, don't, didn't we all just accept that Barbie is bad? <laughs> Why are we what? trying to mitigate this? This is party pooper. Exactly. Party yes. pooper. <laughs> this podcast is a hit. I'm telling you, <laughs> this podcast is a hit. And it was so weird to me when I saw other people's children with Barbies like in 2020. I was like, wait, I thought. We all came to the conclusion this is terrible. Toxic, for but also, girls. mine were plus size because I microwaved them. Oh, yeah. They were huge. Interesting. I didn't know that that was. <laughs> they were bubbling. They had cellulite. <laughs> mine were very We used else. to give them weird haircuts and set them on fire. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So it's like, that is, I don't know. I'm not a mom, so I never want to like weigh in on stuff I don't understand. But um, but I am that person too, like with the new James Bond thing when they're like, James Bond needs to be a woman. I'm like, does it? Let's just create a new character. That um, doesn't have its core in misogyny and and sexual like overly sexualizing women. Because you know what's happening behind the scenes is that the men that made these characters, they're just going to get more money when you remake it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> they I, just get the licensing fee. I don't and know why we can't move on to new stuff. Just make a new thing. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, you know, and then have the woman that writes it and directs it and creates it have them get the money. Yeah, because now Cause they're going to get less exploding. money because the guys that came up with the idea are yeah, going to get the it's royalty. True. It's yeah. like the big trick, the trick that's been played on all this, that feminism just means like getting to own and sexually exploiting yourself. <laughs> yeah, like what? Yeah, that's- You're a feminist now. You get to be naked all the time. <laughs> Talk about how much you want to have sex. On your terms. <laughs> yes. Do you like, think what? that people are scared to make new characters and new concepts because there's so many quote unquote rules to follow now? They're scared of getting it wrong. So they're like, oh, we can just take this thing that already has fans. Well, people like a sure and get thing. The, and get the course. bonus points mm-hmm. for doing yeah. something new. Yeah, it's like- we can't, we already have Coke. Let's just make it Coke Plus instead yeah, of a let's new, put a launch flag a new on brand it. that's <laughs> not known. But imagine we wouldn't have Dr. Pepper. We wouldn't have the prune, prune flavored beverage if they had stuck to that. I'm sorry, I have a Dr. Wait, Dr. Pepper obsession. Wait, I'm obsessed with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it's prune flavored. What? Yeah. Benton? I mean, I know it has 23 flavors, right? I thought it's supposed to be a prune flavored soda. Don't ruin this for me. Oh, I, no, don't, I like, didn't know that. <laughs> I always thought it was cupcake. It was supposed to be cupcake. It's my favorite <laughs> I know. drink. Yeah. It's we'll look Dr. it up. Pepper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always thought it was like a g- prune. It, I believe it's prune flavored. It does. It kind of tastes like figs too. Yeah. Like dried figs. Mm-hmm. Did you find it? My favorite fruit. On yeah. The planet. By the prune side. Okay. What's your baby's name? Okay. Let me just, let me just do this. Uh, let's just bounce around. So do you have in your head like five names? No, nope, one. One only. You're mm-hmm. done. You've agreed played, on it. I like to make a decision and stick to it early on. I get a lot of anxiety about things that haven't been decided upon. Pearl. No, but you're close. I'm <sighs> telling you. It's a gift. <clears throat> okay. And how Wait, am I close? Am I what's close? What's close to a pearl? Because it's Oyster. A, it's Ruby. an emerald. It's... I think you're close in style of name. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Harriet. No. <laughs> okay good so now i know i'm in the um ruby huh ruby no but i like that name but i had a dog named ruby in my childhood oh. so be weird. So that see see that's the thing if i knew her better mm-hmm. i would have knocked that out already sorry. so my, i have a friend no don't be i have a friend <laughs> so, you are so sorry, sorry. <laughs> that was so awful <laughs> i have a friend who has a baby named ruby that i guessed right ruby but, is really a cute name. but i know that she wasn't going to do another one because she had a dog named a cat named that um, okay, I'm close in style. Interesting. And where are you from? New Jersey. Yep. Kind of. Do you go back? No. Snooky. <laughs> Do you go to, where is your favorite place to a vacation if you just had a month off? Oh, I would either go to Europe or Mexico. Hmm. Where in Mexico? I've only been to one place in Mexico, Punta de Mita. And then what's your favorite movie? Like, couple. Like, it's just, um, just your favorite. Like Off the top of my head, I would, I would say Audition is one of my favorite movies. Wow. Um, and I love, um, let's see, Audition, um, 12 Monkeys is one of my favorite movies. But you hate monkeys. Yeah, but they don't really play a huge part in that movie. Here's the other thing I forgot <laughs> to bring up. Is- <laughs> <laughs> Remember the Wizard of Oz sequel? Yes, it was a great movie. The Monkeys on a, Wheels? Who is a Bach. <gasps> and all the headless, all mm-hmm. the heads. Yes. That's a great scene. But with remember all the with all the, the monkeys had the wheels? Yeah. wheels. Yeah. Because monkeys are evil. 
<laughs> well, we are monkeys. <laughs> All good. We're well, basically monkeys. But that's the problem. They're like less evolved humans. That's right. And that is the issue, and that's why they're bad. It's we are um, uh, bonobo apes and humans have closer genetic code than African elephants and Indian elephants. I know. I mean, we're monkeys. I Correct. It. Um, is what's your mom's name? Sarah. Cute. What's your middle name? I don't have one. Hmm. My mother didn't give any of us middle names. What's the point of a middle name? Well, that's what she felt. She felt it was purely religious and she was her like F you to the system. I love her. I enjoy things like that about her. <laughs> she's just fun. Um, what was your, what's your dog's name? Which one? Both. What are their names? <laughs> Both. What are their names? I have Karen Carpenter. I have Patrick. Oh, right. I have Logan and Magneto. What's uh, Logan? Magneto. Logan is a pit lab mix, we think. And what's Logan from? Logan is from an adopted from my stand with my pack. Uh, I work on, with them. Yeah, I'm on their board. What? I don't know how helpful I am, but I'm on the board. Oh my god! They asked me to be on the board, and I was like, I need to deal with this dog thing. Let's do. Oh my god! Yeah, Let's be board buddies. Yeah. Um, it's like the only rescue that I mess with. Anymore. I love them because so and many I have of them are two scams. dogs from them. Yeah. Oh my god, that makes me so happy. Yeah. That member, um, Violet was I stand with my pack. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. The one with the big ears. Um, yeah, I made all the Sharpays. Hmm. All the Sharpays. I love Sharpays. I love Sharpays. They're fascinating. They are fascinating. <laughs> That's and they are right. So smart. The one that kept staring at you. Yeah, Violet. Yeah. She had right. um, entropic, what, like her, she had been starved so severely that her mm. eyelids folded under and we had to cut all of her oh. eyelashes out and then her eyes are just like marbles <laughs> staring thing. at you mm -hmm. and in Sharpays they're bred to pick one person and they're just like obsessed with you there, no one else exists I know it's like a nightmare for a codependent love addict I'm like this is what it should be like and like there's no life outside you so the trick is when you're fostering a rescue Sharpay is like once they get attached it's very hard like the first time I brought her to a possible home to be adopted the door I left out of she bit she bit oh, through no. the door like uh tore up her face and then uh uh broke one of her ankles because she tried to jump over a fence to oh, get to God. me it's like Poor there's thing. nothing yeah. stopping them so then it was like okay now another six months of like rehab and surgery just oh, because yeah their nature is super intense wow. but they're also they were bred um an age to be fighting dogs. That's why they have all the wrinkles is to have uh, for blood to be able to drain off them. You know, I know it's dark and oh, to be able to grab them. And <sighs> I just like when you pull all of them back. And <laughs> yes, I know. I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I just love them. Um, and they're also not that soft. If you, if you rub them one way, they're really soft and the other way it's like prickly. Yeah. You know, they don't really mm -hmm. want to be petted. They've evolved to not... Ruth. No. Can you tell me a couple that were runners up? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I like Goldie. The name. I've always, you know what? Goldie is a name I liked. Mm -hmm. My husband did not. Um, uh, Imogen was a <gasps> runner up. Oh, love. And I've always liked the name Valentine. Love. But uh. my husband did not enjoy that. Um... Val. It's Val at the end of the day, yeah. I guess so, but I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I was attached to it. Um, and there were there really weren't that many, to tell you the truth. What were the runners up of your son? Mm, there weren't any. I just we I just decided on Freddie. That was it. That was it. Because I always I know it sounds really dumb, but I always kind of wanted to I liked the idea of having a kitten named Freddie Mercury Amazing. and um, I never got that <laughs> so I just named my son after him <laughs> <laughs> did you see the movie I did thoughts I it gave me anxiety to watch him handle those teeth yeah that's it all I can think about stressful. and I and he's such a wonderful actor yeah. I just couldn't stop thinking of better ways they could have done that. Like, you're just thinking about the time it took to put, like, the fact that he was, and like, suffering. Yes. 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 
But, you know, he won an award for mm -hmm. those teeth. So. This is hard. But I don't want you to tell me the name because you want to keep the name secret. I mean, I don't know. When will this come out? This When will this air? Next it's week. airing currently. Oh, next week. Next week, yeah, because yeah, your show's coming out. I'm not, I won't have had her yet. Mm -hmm. Nora. No, but it is really, you're really close. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> ah! You're not going to go like silly. You're not going to do Ethel. Too much. You know what I mean? You're not going to go silly goose. I like the name Violet. Also. I love, oh, I mean, me the, the Violet that was, was the name of my Sharpe. Names. Yeah. That's like, I, I always do Violet. My dog's Violet, Daisy, Tulip, all of those. Mm -hmm. Tulip. Tulip. <laughs> I even like the name Pansy, but you can't really name a child Pansy. It's a tricky one. It is too hard. It's a tricky one. But it's my favorite flower. Pansy. Mm -hmm. I like a pansy. Yeah, they're really pretty. They, and they I, and ironically, very, they're ironically, yeah, very resilient. Hardy, yeah. Very resilient. That's why I like them. Um, yeah, just like real life pansies. <laughs> very resilient. This is annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I feel like, because I, I don't want to say another one that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to text you tonight at like 2 a.m. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, I'll just tell you. Don't tell. Not don't, on the show, but after yeah, the show. Tell me after. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me after. Are you new middle name? Uh, we're doing my last name as a middle name. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, Freddie's like, why don't I have your last name as a middle name? <laughs> it's like, oh, just, um, we, we can. We, we can. Are you that. taking your new husband's last name? I'm not. Is that no. a thing? No, I'm not. Is that even a thing? I feel like people still do it. Yeah. I'm not doing it, but. You're like, bitch, I'm famous. It's just, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot. I'm going to get <laughs> carpal so tunnel. lazy. I don't want to. Again, I have, I get so worried that I'm going to screw up the paperwork or do something I wrong. I love it's you, like, baby. I just, I just want, don't want to drive downtown. I don't want to, like, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things not, are good. Let's not ruin a good thing. Yeah. And yeah. what's the, can I ask the last name? Hampton. Christina Hampton. That's cute. Yeah. He's got a very nice name. Mark Hampton is a nice name. That is so. such a good name. I haven't it's met him, though. No, you haven't met him. Because I was like, sometimes with hair artists, you've met him on things yeah. and you know him somehow. Well, he's British. And so he, and oh. he mainly worked in fashion and stuff. So he, he's done celebrity stuff, but Smart. mainly fashion stuff. Smart. Yeah. I met him years ago on a uh, magazine cover for net porte Heaven. Yeah. I could gaze into your eyes forever. <laughs> I'm totally obsessed with you. I hope that when you have a baby, I still get to see you. Yes, of course. Well, I learned something. So when my friend Dory had a baby, I didn't like reach out to her at all because I was like, oh, she's probably busy. She has a baby. She's not sleeping. Things are crazy. And then I was talking to um, uh, my therapist and I was like, I just haven't seen Dory and I don't know if I'm supposed to, like, she's not calling me. I don't know what to do. And she was like, she has a child. She wants to see adults. She wants to hang out with adults. You go over there and talk to her because she's just talking to a ball of goo right now. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I just thought that like, oh, when a woman has a baby, she probably doesn't want to socialize. She probably doesn't have time. She's exhausted. And she's like, no, you have to like go hang out with her. And I was like, yeah. oh, I had no idea. Like, I thought I would be annoying or putting pressure on her. No, no, you should come over to the house. Maybe I'll just send you stuff on Postmates. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Although all those juices were really good. Christina was uh, under the weather last week. I was like, I'm going to send her some juices on Postmates. Like, you know, and then the next day I ordered lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was the default address. <laughs> and she became the address. I just kept sending. And they're like sending me pictures. I was like, where's my food? It didn't come. And they're sending me photos of, I guess, your house. And I was like, That's oh God, house. I'm so sorry. My weird like quinoa <laughs> is at your door. I really apologize. I bet that asshole squirrel got it. No, we took it in. Okay, good. Yeah, for the sprinkler, sprinklers went off. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Um, yellow jackets. I... Can I cannot explain how amazing the show is. No, it's, it's fun. But the, the music. The music's good and there's lots of like, it's very dark and brutal. You know, it's like, you know, it's like a girl. It, it's like a woman our age who was obsessed with Tarantino films as a teenager made this show. I was show. about to say, it feels like Natural Born Killers today. Yes, there's a brutality, like a brutality <sighs> to it that is intentional because you don't often see women Especially just like, nor like I mean, Melanie's character. She's like a stay-at-home mom who 
mer- like skins a rabbit for yep. dinner just because she gets angry. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't see that very often. So it's fun. Yes. Like, it- my character abuses old people. It's great. <laughs> I'm just, but it, there's a there's a um, grounded humanness in it that is so. It's not like bitches be crazy. It's made with like reverence. No, it's of like, like women are capable we, of this shit too. And you, sh- and you should like you squeeze a person. You know, like this, these people have all been squeezed, and these are the personalities that come out of them when you squeeze them for years and years and years. If you're gonna push me up against a wall, this is how I'm this gonna retaliate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Like, I don't, so it's this- Cornered animals. It's, exactly. Yeah. It's badass and not like, oh, this is like Gone Girl drove me nuts. Cause I was like, oh, this is, okay, this is what you, how you guys think women act. Like we can't handle a breakup. We're gonna just have to go like kill everybody and figure out. Oh, I know. never took it from that point of view, but yeah, I see that. Ugh, Eunice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eunice, Eunice is- Tough. Brutal. That would be tough. Be like a, yeah, that's I abuse. believe that's in tough. setting challenges for my children. Adversity <laughs> builds character. Yes, exactly. That is child abuse. That is, that is yeah, I would call, I'm, I'm really trying to see if I should call child not, services. It's not, okay. That's a tough one. You know what I like? Julep. Julep is cute. Julep is cute. Mm-hmm. I like Julie. I like Julie. Yep. It's very French. Reminds me of a, a Julie Andrews story that I've told before on the podcast. A friend of mine asked for a photo with Julie Andrews. Like, <laughs> he's famous. He's like the <laughs> only person that was like famous to him. Right. And he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, can I please get a photo? She said no. No, she said, of course. Oh. Goes to take the photo. And as they snap the photo, she goes, money. What does that mean? She does that. That's her, what makes her smile? Her face looks the best when she says money. Like how the Earl Sintrin say prune? The who? Do you, do you remember what that? What is it with you and prunes today? <laughs> I don't know. Is your child that prune? Is, no, but that is just a coincidence. But remember when they were, had their resurgence and they were always, and it came out that they say prune when mm-hmm. they take pictures? Prune. Mm-hmm. Who That's does that? late 90s Olsen twins. Oh, the Olsen and stuff. prune. Mm-hmm. Which is funny to me because I feel like you could say bunny or sunny or fun. anything. Yeah, yeah, why money? <laughs> I just think that's Hostile. it's such a power move. Just yeah. like money. Nice to meet you. <laughs> what just happened? That's <laughs> like, really it's such funny. a like gangster move. It's pretty good. Oh, I love you. I end these super awkwardly. Okay. And um, yellow jackets. Watch them yellow jackets. Watch out for them yellow jackets. <laughs> Watch out for them yellow jackets. Showtime, showtime, showtime. And if it's on Showtime, does that mean it's on other things too? Showtime, Showtime. showtime. You know what showtime. else is on Showtime? Your Honor. I got the, Your Honor, that show with Brian Cranston. Like Showtime is making the shows now. Yeah. The, yeah, this is on after the new Dexter. Whoa! So it's going to be Dexter and then Yellow Jackets. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Showtime is like like popping. Yeah, I'm excited about the new Dexter. Cannot like wait. that one. Don't write elephants. We love you. <laughs> to That's how we end every podcast. Oh, great. Okay, I won't. <laughs>